Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. You are Yahweh. You are worship Him from the depth of your heart. You are Yahweh. Ask the Lord to bless you and speak to you tonight. One word from the Lord can change your life. One word from the Lord can open a door that you never dreamt will open. One word from the Lord can bring you into a new dimension of the anointing. One encounter with the Spirit of God can open up doors beyond your imagination. Cry from the depths of your heart. Be intentional about it. your presence you are the secret of everything men have celebrated in this ministry we acknowledge you we declare that you are the beginning and the end we thank you you're my treasure my pride Great is the measure of your royalty. Great is the measure of your royalty. For more lives die to you true. We are everything. But now had a shield for me the glory and the litter of my head very simple song of worship says but thou O Lord had a shield for me 
Sing it one more time. That's our testimony in this house. For thou art a shield for me, the glory and the lifter up of my head. My glory and the lifter of my head. For thou, Lord, art a shield. Let's sing it together. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter of my head. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. us tonight oh God we will never never forget your presence but there is nothing we can do without you we declare it we are not ashamed to let the world know that you are our glory we pride ourselves only in your presence it is of your fullness we have received tonight Lord we ask that you speak to the needs of your people challenge us there are people here trusting you for all kinds of encounters there are people here trusting you for healings for miracles for breakthroughs others trusting that you refire their lives and take them to new dimensions of the anointing i ask tonight that you minister to everyone in the name of jesus god bless you please greet one another and be seated hallelujah Let's see how fast we can go tonight so that we can finish early. Pray for me. We're really working on our timing. We want to see how God will grant us grace so that I'll finish fast. Um, by God's grace, we'll make sure that we hasten every activity before my coming up so that we can have time for the word. Sorry, this is not a regular ministry. And so you find out that there's no room for drama and all of these kinds of things. Praise the Lord. And, and all the things we believe that days will come when we'll have time for that. Hallelujah. Announcements and all of these kinds of things. Praise the Lord. Tonight your life will change in a dramatic way. In the name of Jesus Christ. What I'm about to teach you will transform your life. Honestly, I'm determined this year to make sure by the grace of God that we all experience the reality of the rain. Let it not just be a song that will keep singing again and again and again. Hallelujah. We're trusting that God will really, really grant us grace. And so all the teachings that will be coming, please, I want you to pay attention, especially today's teaching. Hallelujah. I was talking to the Lord a few days ago about us, the house, and um, I really appreciated him for what he's doing, but let me start on this note. I'm a bit concerned um, at our pace of both spiritual progress and otherwise. Hallelujah. I am very, very humbled. I... As we travel around ministering the word of God, I am amazed 
not not necessarily surprised but amazed at the impact and the transformation that this ministry and the teaching is bringing in the lives of people we we receive testimonies thousands and thousands of testimonies um, from lives but then every one of them come fresh they come very fresh and really impactful um, when we begin to share maybe one day we'll have the opportunity to share some of these testimonies and you won't believe the encounters the breakthroughs there are whole churches that play koinonia messages and just sit down under that anointing and get blessed and there are all kinds of miracles that have happened to people liftings encounters you know I think one of the greatest testimonies is the encounter that people have through the messages. Angelic encounters. Heavenly encounters. They step into levels of the anointing. And some of them have never been here. Never been here. There are people, there are ministries, there are pastors that travel kilometers to come. And so I'm a bit concerned that we who are here, that God has granted us, the privilege to directly sit down under this very heavy unction. I am a bit disturbed as to why the pace of our growth is a bit slow. Um, and I, I began to ask God because I care about us. I don't just care about myself. Left for me, I am, I am bent on working with God and receiving testimonies from that relationship. But every true leader prides himself in the joy of the people hallelujah if only the leaders succeed we're the only ones getting blessed and prosperous and lifted and anointed you know and god is expanding and increasing our influence many leaders will rejoice at that but my joy is to see that as we rise everyone who sits under this anointing becomes a first-hand epistle of the vision hallelujah so i'm a bit concerned honestly i am um, not necessarily worried but i began to ask the lord because i know that the problem is not with the quality of the word hallelujah by the grace of god we may not be the best but i think we have done well in bringing the word of god in due season so i i really began to talk to the lord about it i expect Ten times the results that we see in our lives. There are people who are afar off. Never seen me. Not even my picture. Some of them have had just one message. Just one encounter. Just one. There are people who have just one koinonia message. Just one. Koinonia teachings are so powerful. It doesn't matter which of them you get. You produce the same thing. Even if it's on marriage and what you need is healing. It doesn't matter just get that atmosphere hallelujah and so i i really i want us to take we are not we are not playing games praise the lord this is a real ministry we are very disciplined and serious with the assignment that god has given us there is a revolution going on in this nation and i can tell you with all humility that we are contributing significantly to the spiritual renaissance that God is doing, especially in the lives of the generations that are coming. I am humbled by those who have access to these teachings. I have met kings. I have met politicians. I have met nobles. I have met people who my level of life would never have afforded me to meet, all on account of the grace of God and what he is doing. Praise the Lord. And I expect that... Um, those of us who are sitting down, please volume, directly under this anointing, we should be able to walk first hand. Many of us have access to me. There's counseling sessions. Even after the meeting, we can, even if it's a handshake, a hug, whatever it is, you sit down directly under the worship, under the prayer, and all of that. And, and so it is either one of two things. Number one, either you are not really interested in pursuing 
this reality of the divine life to be at work in you hallelujah either there is a direct negligence or there is creeping in subtly the danger of familiarity hallelujah familiarity is a disastrous thing it has a way of destroying you hallelujah praise the lord one time reverend dr umar Pai shared a touching testimony many years ago i heard him preach and he said that um, his brother and the brother's friend needed a miracle and it was it was a financial miracle they really needed a miracle from god and the brother went to him and said um can you give me some money and he said you're my brother i can't deny it and he gave him some money but the friend came and said man of god i really need a miracle and he prophesied and spoke to the person and said your bands will never run dry two people same need different results hallelujah there is if your life does not change under this unction i guarantee you something is wrong with your approach god is in this place hallelujah i was humbled by the testimony of our dear sister and um, it doesn't take too much to see the hand of god it just takes you being disciplined and follow instructions the problem with many of us is there is this spiritual stubbornness you know what we call i too know mentality physically see it's a it's a foolish thing when you don't have results in your life and you keep arguing with the words that come hallelujah have you seen students like that in class their cgpa is low they are not doing well yet they argue with the lecturer again and again and then those who are very serious those who are exceptional they sit down diligently there is an attitude look let me tell you the ball is in your court you have to choose you see people changing there are people who are changing there are testimonies that are coming you are the only one who is left you can choose to argue it and watch sick people get healed and watch god change the story of people look at people oh my god look let me tell you if i begin to share with you some of these testimonies hallelujah very humbling testimonies of the hand of god hallelujah we are too small to doubt the might of god do you know how far god can take you brothers and sisters? forget about your age look if you want to receive from god i'm speaking to especially many of us who are students you must remove this student mentality and bury it and 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 know that you are only a student for a few moments many of us this dependency mentality has crippled us you have graduated for five years now but you still believe koinonia is not a fellowship koinonia is an apostolic and a prophetic move of god it's not some kind of campus thing for just young people hallelujah please be determined that there must be an evidence in your life hallelujah there must be an evidence in your life brothers and sisters and this is this is my goal i cry before god every time i pray for us and i say lord please let your people even if it means not blessing me no problem status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days prophesy that's what must happen to you my status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days one more time prophesy to yourself status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days i'm on my way on my way on my way to better days prophesy you're on your way I'm on my way. 
I'm on my way. I'm on my way. It's a better day. It's a better day. It's a better day. Sing, status is changing. Come on. Status is changing. The word of God is doing so something to you. We're on our way. I'm on my way to better day. There is a better tomorrow. I tell you, forget about today. My status is changing. There's no more decline. We're on our way to better day. We're on our way. We're on our way. On our way. That's the destiny of this ministry. Day. We're on our way. On our way. On our way. We're on our way. It's a better day. We're on our way. On our way. You can choose to take the flight or not. But I tell you, God is going somewhere with us. To Prophesy to yourself, it's part of the meeting. We're on our way. That his glory will change something in your life. I'm on my way. To better days. To better days. To better days. We're on our way. On our way. It doesn't take time it doesn't take time hear me it doesn't take time it just takes having access to the keys it doesn't take a lot of stories and discussion there is what you can hold on to when you catch it you have caught it it will change your life men will talk they will only talk for nonsense you will only be moving like a star that cannot be stopped but the question is are you willing it's not enough to just listen there is no situation you are in that is the worst in the earth there are people in a worse situation but this word has taken them out of it and honored them it may look like there is a delay but you must tell yourself the glory of god is changing me this is already a word for somebody tonight you may not look like it brothers and sisters forget about it your status is changing there's no more decline. You're on your way to better day. Let them laugh at you today. Your status is changing. Your status is changing. There's no more decline. There's no more decline. You're on your way. You're on your way to better day. Prophesy to yourself. My status is changing. Spiritually, financially. In every respect, no more I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better day. I'm on my way. 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 To better day. To better day. To better day. To better day. pray and say Lord give me focus help me to settle with the word whatever distracts me whatever distracts me whatever is robbing my life I'm ready to be a student I'm ready to submit myself go ahead and pray I'm ready to lay down my pride to get what works I'm ready to submit myself I'm ready to lay down my pride. I repent from arguing with the word. Give me the keys, so oh God. Let my hands handle them. Pray. I lay down my pride. I lay down my pride. 
I submit to the word of God. I lay down every argument, every vain talk. I submit to the word. I want to see results in my life. There is something I do not know. Show me, oh God. There is something that connects me to the next level. You are changing the life of others. Don't forget about me. I am willing. You are changing the life of others. I am willing. You are changing the story of others. I am willing. I take my eyes away from my failures. I take my eyes away from limitations. I take my eyes away from criticisms. I am not stiff-necked. I am not stubborn. I am malleable to your word. Yes, Lord, I submit to your word. It has changed many. It has produced champions and generals. We're on our way. On our way. We're on our way. To better day. I'd like you to see your future and prophesy. I'm on my way. Oh, they will hear my voice. On my way. They will see his glory upon my life. On my way. To better days. To better days. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We submit to your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please pick up your Bible, First John chapter 5, verse 4. God bless you. Let's get straight to the word. There is a lot to talk about. First John 5, verse 4. Please pay attention. If you are here, sit down, sit down, sit down. God bless you. Please look up, everyone, before we read that scripture. I expect everyone coming for Koinonia to at least buy a book like this. Praise the Lord. All these pieces of papers we have that we throw powerful revelations on it. Get something like this. Please, pay attention. Just be a student for a while and let the world honor you. Forget about pride. Please, I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Young and old, rich or poor, whatever you, when you come to the presence of God, just follow instructions. Your next dimension is in the instruction you follow. Hallelujah. Don't be too, don't do big manism before God. For the kingdom is for children. Get a notebook. Get a good biro. Don't come around if, if, if you have devices or phones that you can, you can, you know, record and write very well. Do so. Don't just sit down and be careless. When you are inviting others, let them know that they are not just coming for fellowship. Hallelujah. If you love them enough, buy it and give them. Buy it. There are lots of jotters that we get from wedding. Free. Huh? Instead of writing your problems on it and writing all the people that hurt you, why don't you bring it, sow it as a seed to somebody? Get this. This is my own notebook. There are many others like this. It shows that you respect what God is teaching you. In the book of Revelation, when John saw everything, he told him, write. He didn't say, think about it. He didn't say, crime it. He said, write, for these words are faithful and true. When prophet Elisha was passing and the Shunammite woman perceived that this was a holy man of God, when they decorated his room, they kept a table for him there so that he would write. The ancient wrote, you must write. Hallelujah. Please, 
when you come that's why we have time to say hug one another when we say hug hug when we say sit down and listen no loitering around walking around pinching this is is demonic it's not just bad it's demonic i'm telling you this is the spirit of distraction your mind cannot do too many things at once hallelujah when the word is coming, that's when you remember that, oh, I, I need to do this. I need to do that. Somebody is pinging you. You are pinging the person. It's demonic. Pay attention. Hallelujah. Please, inside and outside, even if you don't have a seat, pay attention. Somebody is smiling and telling you, have you seen their uniform? Tell the person, please, don't distract me. I'm tired of my situation and my life must change. Don't distract me. If you say it once, you won't repeat it again. But by the time you start entertaining nonsense, in the middle of something powerful that should liberate you, the person will say, can you imagine? Was it uh, that we won't, how much did you even say it? This is not the place to discuss all this for God's sake. Of course, we appreciate ourselves. But if you don't place value for the word, it will never change you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. First John chapter 5. You will thank me tomorrow. You may not like me today, but I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Many are already thanking me. And those who didn't listen are now listening in a painful way. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words be First John 5 verse 4. Everyone read is projected. One, two, read. And this is the victory that overcomes. What is it? Even replace our with my are you ready read it one more time even my faith hallelujah hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 tells us that the just shall live by faith hebrews 10 Verse 38. Media, you have to really help us today. Let's see how we can rush. I want us to finish on time. Hebrews 10, 38. It says, the just shall live by faith. In fact, frankly speaking, four times in scripture it is recorded that the just shall live by faith. But I'll just speak to Hebrews 10, verse 38. Hallelujah. It says, now the just shall live by what? Faith. But if any man draw back, draw back in what? In living by faith. It says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The just shall live. Let me interpret it for you. The quality of your life here on earth is dependent on your understanding of what faith is and how it works. And this is what I'm going to be teaching you tonight. What faith is and how it works. The operation, the dynamics. That's what I would have taught last week. But I was away and, and the Holy Spirit told me, no, you must teach this. My people need to hear it because they need to understand not just what faith is, but how it works. True Bible faith that will produce results for you. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 4. It personalizes it in a very powerful way. I love the prophet. He said, the just shall live by his faith. Not your neighbor's faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. He says, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live. By what? You will prosper by your understanding of faith. You will step into the anointing and the glory of God. The quality, the measure of the glory and the grace of God you will see in your life is dependent on faith. There are, there are free seats here. Please let it be a tradition from now. That every time we begin the service, if there are people standing, some people should sit on their seats. There is a vacant seat here. There is another one that I see. I don't know why there should be those seats. There are people standing outside. Please, ushers, you should know that. Let's, let's occupy all the seats, please. 
Hallelujah. The just shall live by his faith. Everyone say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works. One more time. Say the quality of my life is dependent on my understanding of what faith is and how it works. Praise the Lord. The subject of faith is very important for the Christian experience. Um, there have been many teachings on faith. Many, many teachings. In fact, it's been the core teaching in many Christian circles. But there are a lot of misunderstandings about the true operation of faith. And I trust that God will help us to be able to balance it. I want to go really straight to the point and that very, very fast. Hallelujah. It's not that our regular or popular teachings on faith are wrong. But many teachings about faith, please look up. Many teachings about faith are not complete. Faith is an equation. Faith is a formula. Are you following me now? And the components must be complete for it to work. Here and there, different men of God, preachers, great men and women of God have caught certain dimensions of what faith is and how it works. But to be able to give it a very balanced scope such that it works for those who practice it is where the problem has been. Hallelujah. Let's look at a few um, a few incomplete revelations of faith that have come to the body of Christ. Number one, or some corrections on the imbalances. Number one, it has been popularly taught that faith is believing. No, that's not it at all. Faith is not just believing. That's the point I want you to get. Be to believe is very important. It's part of the equation of faith. But it's not all there is to faith. You see that? For somebody straight up, this is your deliverance. Because you have been taught that faith is just believing. If you believe, that's all. No, sir. I can tell you this categorically. That's not the whole equation. Belief talks of conviction. Belief talks of persuasion. When you believe a thing, it means that you are convicted. It means that you are persuaded. But it does not mean it will produce for you. Please, let's understand that. Belief is part of the process of manifesting faith, but not all of it. It is part of it, but it is not all of it. Please get this revelation. Oh, I believe God, I believe God, I believe God. Wonderful. That's only a step. That's not everything. Many of us, innocent believers, have stopped there. Believing God is not enough. Belief talks of your conviction. It is part of the overall equation, but it is not all of it. Number two. Faith is not just confession. Mm body of Christ faith is not just confession I'm dictating it so that you will write confession is part of the process of manifesting faith but not all of it please you must get this confession in the equation of faith there is a point where confession comes in but that is not all there is to Bible faith see that Many of us have been taught by well-meaning people through the years in our different Christian circles across this nation and for those listening outside of this nation and all of that, we've been taught that all there is to faith is just speak. When you speak it, you have it. No, sir. I tell you the truth from God's word and from this Bible. No, sir. It doesn't happen that way. Are you getting blessed? Hmm. So, faith it's not just confession. You must realize this. If confession were all that there was 
to manifesting faith, I guarantee you there are people who would have been living like angels in the earth today because there are people who speak. I'm not against confession. There is a place. Remember in our teaching, spiritual laws. There is a place. Confession activates. There is a law of speech and sound. But that's not the only law. So it is true that confession is part of the process of manifesting faith. But not all of it. So believing is not all of it. It's only part of it. Confession is not all of it. It's only part of it. Number three. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Faith is not just sowing seeds. Many in the body of Christ have been taught that faith is equal to seed sown. No, sir. Sowing of seeds is also part of the equation. It's activating the law of seed time and harvest. But that is not all there is. You see the imperfections. So when I camp around believing, on one side we have those who believe. Just believe. And if you really believe, it happens. That's not exactly true. Hallelujah. Or confess. And if you confess, that's all. No, that's not exactly true. Or sow seeds. The moment you are trusting God for a house, you sow a seed for that house and go and rest and it happens. No, sir. No, sir. There is an equation. God is not a fraud star. Are you getting my point? That, those kinds of attitudes make God look like a 419er. Right? And this is the reason why many people write against men of God in newspapers. They call us all kinds of things. They call us money mongers. They call us uh, metaphysical people. They call us talkatives because the incomplete teaching. See, let me tell you something. Especially for those of us who are men of God here or will be called into ministry. Realize that the church is an institution. Both a spiritual institution and a social institution. We influence culture. We shape people. The mindset in Nigeria has largely been altered through the church. For good now. Are you getting me? Nigeria is said to be the most religious country in the whole world. And this is because of the presence and the influence of the church. There is a place that the church is playing in nation building. And, and that, that puts a lot of pressure on the man of God. Because what that means is when you mislead people, it will create a ripple effect. Right? There are some of you, as you come and sit down under this anointing, as you hear the things I preach, you take them, some of you verbatim, back to your fellowships, your members, because you believe you want them to receive the same result. And that means I must be careful. If I teach you error, it becomes harder to correct it when it has left me. Are you seeing how error grows? Because when you go now and you are communicating to your churches or your groups or your fellowships, it may not be exactly as I said it. It will be based on what you understand. Right? By what I said. And so, the, the error keeps multiplying as it goes down the line. That's why we pray in the spirit for accuracy of utterance. So that we can communicate only that which is consistent with the mind of God. Are you blessed? So faith is not just believing. Never forget this. Number two, faith is not just confession. The word confess comes from the Hebrew word homologio. It means repeat as you have heard. So there is a place for that. The law of sound. The creative power of spoken words. But that's not all there is. Now I understand that there are times that we men of God take this aspect fragment by fragment. And, and I understand that. That's not what I'm talking about. There are people who have taken this in koinonia. We have examined all of these aspects in details one by one. And that is just for understanding. But when it comes to manifesting faith, you must be able to piece up all the fragments together. Are you getting my point now? To complete the equation. Otherwise, what you are doing is not Bible faith. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Faith is not just about sowing seeds. Otherwise, what difference do we have with those who just give charity around? There are unbelievers who sow cars, sow houses. Is that true? 
faith is a law never forget this faith is a law meaning it works anywhere it is accurately practiced when it is released anywhere a law is not something that is territorial necessarily it's a principle that works anywhere it is diligently practiced salt is salt in nigeria salt is salt in bangladesh salt is salt in israel salt is salt in ukraine salt is salt in the bahamas hallelujah a gun is a gun in nigeria right a gun is a gun in israel what a gun can do in nigeria it can do in uk that's how faith is is a law so write very quickly the principles of manifesting the faith that works the principle of manifesting the faith that works i'm being very simple tonight because i really want us to get this this is very core and foundational to our understanding and our success in life the principle of manifesting the faith that works let me have two people please any two people Please watch this. Stand here, Benga. You stand here. Promise. Watch this. Why is faith very important in the life of the believer? I want you to watch these people. This is. Hold this. This is God wanting to reach out to man. This is the blessing. Watch this. This is the breakthrough. This is the healing. This is the prosperity. This is the new level of grace. This is the insight. Are you getting me? And here is man. God so designed it that there is between God, his desire to bless you, and down at your end, your desire to receive, there is a law that connects that. That law is called faith. Are you getting me now? Faith is important because it is the biblical platform that authorizes God's power to come into your life. Faith is the platform that authorizes God's ability. My brother wants to see the power of God. And it's not like God's ability is crippled. Lord, I want prosperity. Lord, I want healing. Lord, I want a miracle. Take me to another level. I want to begin to have encounters in the spirit. This is it. This is it. Fully paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? And this is another imbalance that preachers say. The fact that a thing has been paid for does not mean it comes to you automatically. Is that true? I can pay for something and tell you when you go to the supermarket, it's paid for. But that does not mean it has been delivered automatically. See that? Faith. Faith is what connects you. Watch this. This brother is standing desperate. Oh God, would you not change my situation? 10 years, 15 years, nothing has changed. He's born again. He believes in Jesus. He believes Jesus died. He's a tongue talker. Maybe he even pays tight in church. So it. Confesses the word. But nothing is changing. Because this connection. Are you seeing it now? God is asking that you authorize him. There is a connection. Between the power of God. And where it is needed in this earth realm. Are we following now? Between you and that breakthrough is your ability to connect. Are you willing to authorize the hand of his majesty? He wants to come. Make no mistakes about it. God wants to reveal himself as a loving God. The love of God compels him to want to bless us. But the problem is that we have not been taught how to connect. Stretch your hands, promise, and connect this. This is faith. Once you lay hold on this, then there is, there's no limit again. There are many of us, thank you very much, guys. God bless you. And I don't know what they were thinking about. They're thinking, they're always thinking impartation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's why I gave the example from beginning so that your, your desires will not be disappointed. Praise the Lord. 
Could it be, brothers and sisters, that where you are, where your family is, is not just because the devil is so powerful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not just because you may not be praying correctly, but maybe you have not been taught. There is nothing wrong in not knowing. The problem is when you are not willing to learn. Hallelujah. Faith is the platform. Never forget this. This is why we need faith. The platform that authorizes God's ability to be made manifest in a person's life. God needs an authorization to step into your life because he gave man willpower. When he said, let them have dominion, it became scripturally incorrect for God to interfere with man's life just like that. No. He needs an authorization. That's why the Bible says in the book of Revelations, it said, behold, I stand. And what? And what? This is God speaking. Why will he be knocking? Won't he just step in and say, I created you. Open that door whether you want it or not. No. Behold, I stand and knock. And I will keep knocking for as long as you are willing to open it. Tonight, may we authorize God to step into our lives. And you will see how small many situations are. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, the faith of God is at work in me. So what then is this equation of faith? How does it work? Now that we know that faith is not just, um, I would define faith at the end of the teaching, but that the workings of faith, we have little bits and pieces of it. So here and there we confess the word. And we seem to have some consolation, but nothing major happens. Here and there we sow seeds. Very good. But then that's not all there is. Here and there, we, we um, do what again? We are convicted. Oh Lord, I believe you. Are you not the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? God says, yes, oh, I am. Huh? Are you not the one that parted the Red Sea? God will say, of course. Why are you not parting my situation? And then God says, allow me. Authorize me. Authorize me. That's why the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. I repeat, the Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for every outcome of your life, meaning I don't do anything. All I have to do, after all, I was a sinner. You are the one who died for me. I didn't ask you. Now that you have died for me, make sure that everything goes well. Give me tea. Give me bread. Do everything for me. See that? And there is an imbalance of the grace message that if not careful, stretches to that limit. Where it tells you God should do everything for you. No, sir. There are two dimensions of grace. Let me say it very quickly. I've listened to a lot of great mess, grace messages by different men and women of God. And I agree absolutely with them in many aspects. There may just be a need for some little adjustments here and there who's that what's wrong with her she's sick huh who brought her you came with her hold her now protocol and let her talk huh please hold the mother and let the lady come come you you can hold the mother what's wrong Her kidneys. Hold on, please. Where are you taking her? No. Bring her. It's a spirit. Bring her. It's not that she's restless and she wants to go out. It's the spirit. That's what happens to many people when they come for miracle service. Once I come up, you see them restless. They say, I'm going. It's a spirit. How long has this been? Huh? Can she talk? Mama, how are you? How long are you? Her brother, how long has this been? Her kidneys are what? Renal failure. She can. You believe that Jesus will change all this? As we worship in your presence, there is healing. 
the Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing Jesus we believe Jesus there is healing in your name one more time come on sing Imagine this were your mother. Jesus, we believe. Jesus, there is Don't cry. in your name. Don't cry. In the name of Jesus, the anointing is on all of you, all three of you. Right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I cause this devil of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command brand new kidneys right now. Mommy, brand new kidneys. In the name of Jesus, I cause that devil of infirmity. I see you in the spirit. Go! In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Renal failure, I cause you. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I cause you. I cost you, 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 I cost you. Hallelujah. Mama, look at me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am healed. I am. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am. I am. Look at me. Everybody leave her. Leave her alone. Come. Come. Help her. Come. Help her. Hold this please. Help her. That devil is a liar. Please put this in. Walk. Come. Leave her. Don't hold her. Just guide her. Come. Come. Just turn around. Turn around. Help her. Turn around. Come. Kidney failure. That devil. Is. Look at she's happy. Look at what is happening. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come. That devil is a liar. Let her come. Let her come. Help her. Just guide her. Let her come. That devil is a liar. Lift your legs, mama. Go ahead. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. Listen, this is witchcraft. Your mother would have died on Sunday. They would have told you this woman is dead. She would have slept like that and woken up. Because as I looked, I saw the spirit. And I was looking, I said, what is this? And they were carrying her out. Look, it's better for them to come and die here than to get up. We are not playing games. This just came to prove the teaching. I'm about to say some other things. You must believe. They, they believed God, but they didn't stop there. They would have stayed in Shika, and this woman would have died because I see in a vision, Sunday, they would have said it's over. Huh? Don't cry. Don't, don't cry, gentlemen. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I assure you, you will come back and stand here to give your testimony. That wicked spirit that has been tormenting you. Huh? Go and look. Has she been eating? She has not been eating because the Holy Ghost is ministering to me that Mama is hungry. Find something for her to eat. God bless you. Take her. Lift your hands and let's bless his name for one minute. Please sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's hurry up. Let's continue. Sorry about that. There is a spiritual strategy for manifesting faith. Just like we saw. I don't know how long our mother has been. But in seconds, you can authorize the power of God. See, I already sense the healing anointing. So as you are listening to me, if you are sick here, this is always what happens. Because when once, one miracle happens, the water is stirred, Right? Very important. 
Brothers and sisters, listen. It's not like these guys could not have prayed for mama. There is nothing special about me. This is what I want you to understand. The goal, I know some of you are saying I don't agree. There's, just listen to what I'm telling you. You know, you know as I preach, I, I discern your thoughts. I know what you are agreeing with and what you are not agreeing with. <laughs> Hallelujah. The equation of faith. Let me give you an equation of faith that if you practice, I guarantee you are touching the integrity of the maker of heaven. You will be shocked at what your life will become. It will begin to produce immediate results for you. Immediate results. Hallelujah. Pray in tongues for one minute as we prepare to receive this. We are hurrying up. Please, take it serious. Say, Lord, open my eyes. Don't just hear. Don't just look. See. Inside and outside, pray in tongues, participate. Open our eyes, we submit to you. Great Spirit of God, open our eyes. and this is the faith that overcomes even our faith this is number one the faith of God that produces results in your life always starts with revelation Bible faith, please hear me, always starts with revelation. You can never manifest true faith until there is a revelation. A revelation. The first piece of the equation of faith is revelation. And there are two dimensions to revelation. Please look up. The first is study. 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 And the second is meditation. You don't have revelation just by wishing. Study. It first starts by searching out. You cannot have faith in what you do not know. I love this baby. Come. Ah, she's afraid. She's going to run to her mother now. <laughs> may God bless one, one of these days our children will open the service for us all of them will just hold the mic and blast in tongues for 10 minutes oh yes many of them pray in tongues at their age we didn't even know whether but, but God is doing a lot of work in our children hallelujah praise the Lord let's continue revelation so it starts with diligently searching everybody say diligently searching now, the problem with many believers, you cannot spend your life just reading newspapers, chase magazines, name them, all those kinds of rubbish and expect to have Bible faith. Even if there is a column where a man of God quickly shared something, faith doesn't come that way. Brothers and sisters, there is an investment you must make in studying the word. Look at me. This is your promised land. You must walk through it. Every time you read the Bible, it's like you are walking through your promised land to see what God has given you, to see what has been apportioned to you. So as I study this, I see, Halabakatayada, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do greater works than this. As I study, I begin to see, if ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? That you will be exalted above all nations and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. 
Are you getting my point? When you are studying the Bible, imagine that you are walking around your land of promise. When you study the Bible, you are seeing the things that have been paid for. Are you getting my point? That cancer is killing you and you take the Bible and you search. And you see where he hung on that cross and he said, it is finished. But that has not entered you. You are aware. Remember, you are getting revelation and this is only the first part. That's why I'm telling you what many people call faith is not faith. So I begin to walk around the promised land. Like he told Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes and look eastward, northward. That's what you do. When you begin to study, it's like you are walking through your land of promise. Brothers and sisters, you may be soaking Gary, just walk through the land. You are, you are no problem. There is no stove to boil the Indomie. Break it as you are eating. Walk, walk. You think I don't know how that thing works? Don't be fooled by what you see. There is a testimony of the transition of faith. See that? I was sharing with a lady that once upon a time I used to buy bread and cut it and put granite. There's a way you arrange it so that with every bite, you know, the whole surface area is covered, you push it in. You are not the first to do it. So all that insult, you've been insulting God, you said, look, there are people who did not even have the bread. Right? And God brought them out of it. So he will, he will bring you up. We just sang that our status is changing. But it starts as I walk through the land of promise. Everybody say the word of God is my land of promise. Say one more time, the word of God. I know tonight's teaching is very simple, but don't trivialize the power of it. The word of God is my land of promise. Ha! So I study, brothers and sisters. See, as I'm, I, I feel like just sitting down to start studying the Bible. As I'm just talking to you now. A weak person, a non-entity, nobody knows you. But when you walk through that land of promise, you are already engaging something. You may not understand. There's, I'm not denying the, look, I'm not denying the fact that you are in pain. Don't get me wrong. Faith does not deny what is happening. You see that? Aha. Uh -huh. So if I'm sick and I say, I have headache, it's not negative confession. No. Please. If you want to say you are well, say you are well. But if I'm sick and I tell you something is, is pinching me here, it's not lack of faith. Are you getting my point? Many of us have felt so guilty. We don't even know when you are serious, when you are saying the real thing or not. You say, bros, can we get 20 naira? I say, I'm rich. Say, no, no, no. The issue is, you know, if you don't want to say, okay, there's nothing exactly in the pocket. Please, don't feel embarrassed. Don't make it look like the word of God makes you a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't just speak anyhow and then things change. Speaking is a law. The Bible says a curse causeless shall not stand. Are you getting what I'm saying? So don't just say if I speak anyhow, whether I believe it or not, something happens. Be wise. That's why we are growing. Praise God. Study. So I walk through this thing. Look, let me tell you how I study. Let me show you how I study. I don't study foolishly. I study strategically. Everybody says strategically. My goal of studying the Bible is not to crime scriptures. There are real needs on ground. Criming does very little in helping you produce results. I hope you are aware. You can cram Genesis to Revelation. The part you truly act out in faith is the part that works for you. Is that true? So I write different aspects of my life that I want to see the glory of God revealed. I write ministry. I write my finances. Are you following me now? Different aspects. And I begin to walk through the garden of the Lord. My promised land. Finding out what God's idea. What are his promises? What, is his, what does his word have to tell me about this? How far can I be anointed? To what limit? The problem is. You see the reason why the devil kills your word study life right see when the devil wants to destroy you there are three things he just attacks it's very easy number one he kills your word life 
Number two, he kills your prayer life. Number three, he kills your corporate fellowship life. When these three are dead, you are finished. It's as simple as that. Just three things. You want to go and study and all of a sudden that lukewarmness. Notice, ladies, you've read novels that are two times larger than this. But to read just three or four pages, that's to tell you there is a devil that does not want you to see something. Are you getting my point? I can give you a storybook and you can read. Many of you have gone to the library you have gone to different things. There are many people who in your place of work, you are given tasks that require you reading voluminous books and you do all of that within a week. But how come when it comes to studying this, you thought it's because the letters are small. You brought, you bought large letter edition. It's still, it's big. There, is a, there is a spirit. Hallelujah. Everybody says study. It starts there. Let me not deceive you, brothers and sisters. Faith is not cheap. If you understand this, you will respect everyone who walks by faith. True Bible faith starts the encounter of the word. When you study, you find the promises. When you find the promises, the next thing is meditation. Everybody say meditation. It's still part of getting to the point of revelation. I'm trying to break down how faith truly works. Say meditation. What is meditation? The word meditation is as, as, not just to, to speak aloud. The word meditation is the process that makes a revelation become your own. You see that? Okay, now you are studying. He told Peter, for instance, cast your net to the right side. How does that story relate to your situation in Zaria? Meditation. Meditation begins to draw out the spirit of that word. It begins to personalize it. It's in the place of meditation that some of us even have encounters. Real encounters. While you are meditating under a heavy unction, you can sleep and then you have a dream. In that dream, you can have encounters. Some of you can see men of God. Some of you can see people. And that thing crystallizes your conviction. You get up and hold that scripture and say, I caught this. See that? When, when there is meditation, the end of it is conviction. The whole goal of revelation is to bring you to a point of conviction. Another word is persuasion. I'm showing you how Bible faith starts. Persuasion. Persuasion. If you are not persuaded, you cannot finish the equation. Because you will doubt on the way. So you must strengthen your persuasion before the journey begins. Hallelujah. You don't believe in tithing. You just did it because your pastor lashed at you and said, Look, you have not been paying tithe. I'm, I'm watching those who are standing. I'm working in the same office with you. It's, it's me that pays your salary. Eh? And, and you get angry. And you get afraid. And so just to please your pastor, you just squeeze your envelope and frown and stand. And you lift it up, let him see you. Oh, I'm dropping it now. You won't be blessed that way. That's mechanical. I never do things until I have the revelation for them. It's painful to do a thing without having the revelation. You'll be trying to copy others. And after wasting your time, you won't get their results. Don't be hasty in doing anything. Get a revelation. Hallelujah. Do you spend time meditating? Let me tell you, one of the greatest key to meditation is silence. Many of us are too noisy for the word of God to become alive in us. Is God speaking to us? There are times in the night, late in the night, I just carry a chair and I go outside and I just sit down. No noise. All the noisemakers are asleep. And I just sit down. And I'm just praying in tongues. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes I could just carry. Worship is not noise. You can have that faint atmosphere of worship. And you're just sitting down. All of a sudden, a scripture like an arrow will fire into your spirit. 
When you share it with somebody, you'll be disappointed that they don't jump at it the way you jump because it's a revelation to you. Have you ever shared a scripture with somebody and said, my goodness, my brother, you are slapping your head while you are talking. Say, ah, this is not last week's coin. On your and you live there so sad and disappointed. Don't be disappointed. They are life to those who find them. To those who find them. It has become your revelation. Now you are ready to move to the next level. Are we following now? So the equation starts with what? Number one is revelation. And under revelation, it takes study and meditation. When a revelation has truly entered your spirit, it will bring conviction. Listen, I've said it again and again and let me repeat it. Revelation is not knowing what God has said. That's study. Revelation is knowing what it takes to make it work in your life. Number two, the second dimension, the moment conviction and persuasion is there, you believe it. That's why many of us stop. But that's not all there is. Let me shock you. The next dimension to the equation of faith is prayer. And I'll tell you why. It's not just acting. It's prayer. Listen to me. I'm telling you what works. Prayer. When you catch a revelation, the next thing is not to run. You will miss something major. This is where a lot of people miss it. Are you getting it now? When you catch a revelation, brothers and sisters, the next dimension is prayer. An investment praying in tongues. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of praying in tongues, real fluent spiritual tongues given by the Holy Ghost, content for it we are more than ready to minister to you here hallelujah the holy ghost has settled this issue of tongues or no tongues in the body of christ you are the only one who has not had the revelation it's a done deal it's a settled thing the advantages of praying in the spirit is is beyond any denominational barrier whatever it is what does prayer do to you two things prayer reveals the strategy it's not enough to know what God wants to do there is always what you must do to commit God prayer is where you get the strategy hear me it is not every place in scripture where the condition is verbatim there are some situations that are customized to you let me give you an instance you now read how Jesus healed blind Bartimaeus right or how God opened the womb of Anna. I'm a, okay, well, I'm not a woman. I wanted to use an example. Of, <laughs> praise the Lord. Now, but imagine that there is a woman who is buried, unable to take in. And now she begins to meditate. Seeing the ministry of fruitfulness all in the Bible. All the scriptures that God has placed for fruitfulness. And all the barren women in the Bible who God opened their womb. She's studying. And in it, she begins to find spiritual keys. Are you getting my point? What they did, it does not mean you just, you can stand up. Your situation may not afford you the opportunity to do exactly what they did. For instance, some people left to Jericho. Where is your own Jericho? That you, are you getting me? It is in the place of prayer. The Holy Ghost gives you your customized strategy. Are you getting my point? Two things happen in prayer. We are we are a praying ministry. See, you must be a man of prayer to appreciate what I'm saying. If you don't pray, it won't make sense to you. As you begin to pray, the strategy comes. You can't obey until the instruction comes. Are you getting my point? Strategy. So I begin to pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, a crowd is packing full here. How are we going to get another venue? And I'm praying, humanly speaking, there may not be another venue. Lord, we thank you. What are you saying? And I begin to study the wilderness ministry of Jesus. How did they manage the crowds? What did they do? But we are not in the wilderness. So I need a rema. Are you getting my point? Prayer is what brings the spirit of the revelation. And then you will hear a word for you sometimes you can be praying it is in the place of prayer that you get the customized revelation and then 
Two things happen. Number one, I told you, you get the strategy or the instruction. The second thing is you receive the grace supplied for obedience. You can never obey God until grace is given to you. Because some of the instructions that you will get from the place of prayer will be too hard. Some of the instructions may be empty your account. Some of the instructions may be pray all through the night. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Some of the instructions may be make sure you come and buy water here for three weeks. All kinds of instructions. That's why he not only gives you strategy, he releases the grace. Many people try to obey without the grace. This is the two-part dimension of grace that I want to explain to you. There is the dimension of grace that brings you into the finished work of Christ. And there is the dimension of grace supplied to you to obey, to actualize it. Right? It has been paid for, but you need grace to ensure its delivery. Someone's situation is changing. So you see that you prayed, you believed it. Oh, a job is coming. Makatala, ba, 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 ba. I found that revelation where Jesus, the, the master, told them, he said, why sittest thou idle? You see, you have to search. Lord, I'm jobless. Uncle, give me a job. You will, you will be frustrated forever. All those uncle and auntie things. Many of us have never paid attention to this other option. You just hear it. But why don't you go back to the word of God? Lord, I don't have a job. Holy Spirit, guide me. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God, who, who searches the mind of God, begins to reveal to you. And you find that parable, for instance. You find the parable where Jesus was sending people into the vineyard. Is that true? And he met some people and said, Why sittest thou idle? Is that not a scripture now that relates to your situation? Through study. There are Bible concordances. There are Greek and Hebrew Bibles. There is Bible Gateway. There are many Bible softwares that ease your search. Huh? Scriptures on joblessness. Google. Enter. And scriptures come out. No, no, no. Look, don't laugh. Except you don't want a job. And you bring them out. Some may make sense. Some may not make sense. Just scan them. And you find you don't need plenty. It may just be one. And now you are getting that scripture. Watch this. When you get that scripture, you meditate. Lord, open my eyes. What made the master to call them? Was there anything on their part that they did? Is there something in between the line in this story that my eyes has not seen? Hallelujah. And you get it. So God is able. You see, the might, the revelation of the might of God begins to down on you. If God gave these people jobs and he paid them salary, it means I can get a job and they will pay me salary. And you begin to pray. The moment you begin to pray, don't just get up and act and say, yes, I've caught it, application. I hereby write for a job in this company. You must give me. What grace is sponsoring that, 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 that religiosity? That's religion. That's why you open the office and they'll say, what are you saying? You say, I want a job. They say, walk out of here. Do you think? And you, and you now live disappointed. You went with a lot of zeal. God is good. He has done me well. And, and now you are there and, and you are disappointed because you did not finish the equation of faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The next thing you would have done is to take that revelation to the place of prayer. The threshing floor. Where your customized, unique instruction is given. Somebody's breakthrough is already happening to him. Because God is showing you the missing link. It will work. And then I begin to pray. This is how I do with koinonia messages. I play the messages. And while the messages are playing, because there are some things that I said by the Holy Ghost, the man of God is preaching and Joshua Selman is listening to him. And while he's preaching and praying, and I just hear something. Once you hear it, you are ready to act. Because the moment an instruction comes, that instruction can still refer you back to the Bible. Right? It doesn't just mean that you see an angel with wings. You can hear it and then an instruction will come. You can be praying and say, Lord, change my situation. As I go for koinonia, change my situation. 
and while you are praying lord i believe you will change my life tonight and while you are praying a scripture just come jesus told the lepers go and show yourself to the priest you see that that's a revelation that would have not made sense in a normal day but to you it is god's remark to you and the bible says as they went what god does that mean it means you should stand up and go see that and as you go you commit the integrity of god to perform so prayer reveals the strategy and it also supplies grace because there are some instructions especially financial instructions some of you you have not you are not givers that's why it, it, it you don't get there are some people here who are reckless givers if you are a true giver you know that you need grace it's called giving grace because you are crying and say lord change my situation Lord, I leave this 10,000. Something must happen. I don't have an uncle. I don't have an auntie. My father is dead. My mother is dead. I don't have anybody. I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. You are the only one I have. And Lord, if you do not help me, I have seen in the word of God that these are the situations. And God says, take now thy Isaac, that son. Are you a fool? You are about to go and use that money and at least even buy a Bible with it. And God says, I know it's a Bible you want to buy. Forward match. Sometimes God can tell you to go and sow it into the life of somebody you don't love. You can't pretend you didn't hear it. See that? But in that instruction, you are now ready to obey. That's the last final phase of the equation of faith. Prompt and complete obedience. Please write. Number one is revelation. Number two is prayer. Number three is prompt and complete obedience. Having all readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Prompt and complete obedience. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Please let's hurry up. Let me tell you something brothers and sisters. This is the hardest part of the equation of faith. Settling down to study is not the hard part. This is the labor dimension of faith. Are you getting me? This is where you labor in the spirit. It says, if ye be what? And not willing and desirous. Not willing and hungry. If ye be willing, revelation makes you willing. But obedience, the hardest part, this is the link, brothers and sisters, this is the consummation of the faith equation. No matter what else you do that you call faith, if you do not obey, it is not called faith. Hallelujah. Confession, sowing of seeds, only become potent when we are willing to obey. When we are willing to obey. Everybody say obedience. I have found out that this is the link between where you are and where you need to go. Brothers and sisters, obedience is not child's play. Obedience is hard work. That's why you must receive the grace in the place of prayer. Lord, I know you are about to speak and I cannot pretend that I'm not hearing you. So grant me the grace. That when the instructions come, may they not be too heavy. Yes. 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 That's all I'll say to him. Yes. 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 I'll say yes. That's your link to the next level. Yes. When you hear that instruction, it means your season is about to change. If you 
are willing to obey, no power in existence can stop you from going to the next level. I give you a, a guarantee. Listen, your obedience is what judges the devil. Obedience. Obedience. Oh, I feel the anointing of the Spirit. I'll hurry up so that we will pray. Brothers and sisters, obedience. Obedience. We are going to look at one case study and then we'll support you with a few. Isaiah 51, please, quickly. One and two. Let's hurry up. Isaiah 51. Let's look at a man who from the Bible is called the epitome of faith. Isaiah 51. Hallelujah. Verse 2. Everyone read. It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him. That means God is giving you a case study. He's saying now that you know what faith is, look at a biblical portrait. Understudy his life and you will find therein the keys. So let's study Abraham. Genesis 22. Quickly please. Our first case study is Abraham. How did God turn an idol worshiper? A mediocre in a small land called the awe of the Chaldeans. How did he become so prosperous? How did he become the father of faith? Hallelujah. Verse 2. It says, and he said, watch this. Okay, let's go to 12, verse 1 and 2, then we'll come back to 22. Genesis 12 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible, do you know that the person who was supposed to carry this, this fatherly mantle was his father, Terah? It was not Abraham. Terah missed it through disobedience. And the Bible says, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of what? Are you seeing now? So, we see that an instruction came. What was the instruction? Get out. Don't ask questions. Just move. He says, get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred father's house, unto a land that I will show you. He said, if you do this, here's the result. I will make of thee. Many times we cut the part of the scripture and just start claiming, I will. no, there was an instruction. Faith is a response to an instruction. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Next verse. Verse 3 now. Help us media. In Jesus name. Please walk together. We have to really rush. Okay, no problem. And then he finished all the blessings. I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. When will that happen? When will that happen? What was the first instruction? Get out. Abraham would have remained there. And he would have died an idol worshiper. At the awe. At awe of the Chaldeans. He got up. And began to move. Go to verse 13. Chapter 13, sorry. Chapter 13, not. Chapter 13, from verse 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot went with him into the south. Abraham took a step and he started moving. Lord said, I'm going with you. For joining in the obedience alone, the man became blessed. Are you getting me now? Lot was not part of the covenant. Like Ruth held on to who? Naomi. She was not supposed to be part of the lineage. She said, no way. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, prophet, thank you. I'm, I'm leaving. Ruth said, no way. Your obedience is my... Whatever you do, I will do. 22 verse 1. Here was a test. The instruction was going to come for that promise to become real. At this point, Abraham had begun to experience some, some kinds of things. Liftings and all of that. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt. The word tempt there is test. Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am, verse 2. And he said, What? Take your son, 
we are understanding Abraham. Abraham did not just carry Isaac. He would have slaughtered his son for nothing with no blessing attached. You move as instructed, not as you wish. Either instructed by the voice of the spirit or the principles of the word. It's still the same. We have been taking steps out of our wishes and not out of the voice of God. It says, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will show you. Verse 3, may that be your testimony. Read the first line. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Everybody say prompt obedience. Delayed disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure. When God speaks to you, stand up. The moment you sit down there, that grace gets exhausted and you find out you no longer can stand up. God told you to sow the seed. At that point, because it was in the place of prayer, you could do it. He said, wait, later on. When you came, you now calculated how much? 120. Hey! What did I hear like this? In the morning, you even said, it's even 200 I'll give. But something has happened. See that? Or go and lay your hands on the woman in Shika. And he said, in the name of Jesus, I'm going. I know that they are used to seeing me just as a brother. But I'm going as instructed. And later on, you just say, let me quickly just go and greet uh, Benga. And see whether he has prepared lunch. After the lunch and everything, you get up. And your mind starts telling you, yourself, they have already called you stupid. Even before you behave stupid. Now, by the time you go to the hospital, what if they drive you? What if something happens to the car? I say, oh Lord, I'll just intercede. After all, it's, it will soon be time for prayers. You see, the, the beauty of grace is you take advantage of it immediately. The grace for obedience must be maximized promptly. He rose up early. There is a reason why the Bible tells us that. Remember, we're understanding Abraham. He rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and so on and so on and so forth. Uh, let's go to verse 5. Verse 5. Okay, verse 7. He said, And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb? The son didn't know he was the lamb. Next verse, please. Let's hurry up. And Abraham said, My God shall provide a lamb for his bond offering. So they went up together. Verse 9. And they came to a place which God had done this and that and that. And he bound Isaac. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth. Makalabo kataya. His obedience was about to be complete. Do you know if he did not leave that knife, everything he has done is multiplied by zero. It's painful when you start your obedience and stop. You've paid too much price. Why don't you finish it and, and commit God's integrity? Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, lay not thy hand on the lad, neither do thou anything to him. He said, for now. See that? For when? Not when you left your house. Not when you were at the base of the mountain. For now. I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. In other words, you obeyed me even unto death. The blessing follows. 13. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and beheld a ram caught by the thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it at a burnt offering instead of his son. 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Are you seeing that now? Jehovah Jireh, you are singing it. Jehovah Jireh. Uh -uh. Don't just sing. What did he do that made that a revelation? My God shall supply all my needs. True. According to his riches in glory. But according to your obedience to the instructions that will bring that riches. 15. And the angel of the Lord called out of Abraham called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said by myself come on now this is God stepping in when your equation is complete Satan was not mentioned here it was a deal between God and he said by myself I have sworn because thou hast done done not said not confessed oh I will kill Isaac in the name of Jesus Isaac you are dead in fact it's not that you are dying you are dead 
is nonsense if there is no obedience. He said, and has not withheld thy son. 17. He said that in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. As, the, as, as thy seed as the stars of heaven. And as the sun which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall what? Possess the gates of thy enemy. Please. I want you to make up your mind beginning from today that obedience will become the watchword of your life. This is Bible faith. Obedience. In Joshua chapter 6, just write it. I will not need to go there. The walls of Jericho. I want to show you. In fact, when you go to Hebrews 11, the Bible begins to give us the archives of men who did exploit with what we know called faith. And you find out that for all of them, there may be variations here and there, but one common thing is that they all took steps when a word came. They took steps. Jericho. In Joshua chapter 1, the Lord began to speak to Joshua. He said, as I was with my servant Moses, so I will be with you right he said only don't be afraid be courageous and so on and so forth and and you know he looked at all of them now watch this god had told him he had given him jericho but if they just went do you know they would have killed them please learn this never obey just try to obey without prayer involve god you will get the unique instructions that's where the power lies in the word in the instruction hallelujah when Joshua went to pray in the night, what happened? The strategy was revealed to him. So on one side, you will take Jericho, but there is a strategy. It's a strategy that was never used in the Bible for anything again. It came as a rema. And he told him, he said, walk around. That's the strategy. You walk around today and it may not walk until it is a rema. But he walked around seven times, right? And on the seventh day, he went seven times and he said, now, healer let there be a shout that was a strategy other times he told jehoshaphat he said put the worshipers in front and let them begin to sing and say you are good and your mercies endure forever that's the strategy for you your strategy may be come for counseling god can tell you there is an anointing you will receive and it will change your life write your name for counseling even if there is nothing just come that's a strategy for someone else, the Lord will say, go on a three-day fast. In the three-day fast, I will speak to you. And you will catch a light. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you see that many of the things we call faith is not faith. It's not faith. It's just metaphysics. The widow in Zarephath. 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 16. Just write it. will not turn there for time's sake. Remember what happened. God commanded Elijah to go to Zarephath. There he will meet a widow. And watch this. He came and he met a woman in a state of lack and insufficiency. She needed to put her faith to work. But she could not put her faith to work until a word would come. And the prophet said, bring me water. The woman would have said, water for what? Water for what? And she took the water and as she was bringing it, he said, also bring me a morsel of bread and she said honestly sir this instruction is so much he said just do this and the bible says when she obeyed her faith was released and she saw the supply are you seeing in scripture that all through the hallmark of faith is obedience in my opinion there is one word for faith obedience that's it one word obedience if you do not obey the word, forget about the manifestation. When we're about to start Koinonia, I went to the Lord because the Lord had shown me in a vision. But where I saw in a vision, I could not relate with any physical place. And then I was, my mind had a lot of options here and there. But I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I know that you are able to do this. All I need is a strategy. And I was praying, praying in the spirit just lying down and worshiping and all of a sudden i had cgc the lord spoke to me and i said lord i don't even know the people here how are we going to get access to the place and the lord told me i've gone before you you see you don't need to do anything just stay there the word has come 
and see where we are today the product of faith it will work any day it will work any time one time i was praying and i said lord how do we do now there are sick people and your people need to be equipped and the lord said turn the last friday of every month to become a special time to minister to the people when the counseling was getting too much every day i said lord what is what is this strategy and first we had moved to saturday and then the lord helped us to arrive who does counseling on monday by 11 o'clock does that make sense to you but that's what god said look brothers and sisters if he speaks start moving let your mind understand later on are you getting what i'm saying look at jesus i love jesus jesus looks at a man who is blind sir i am blind and then Jesus makes mud, right? Puts in his eyes and says, go and wash. Go and wash. Go and wash. I'm blind. If I could see, would I come to you? They let me. He didn't say, neighbors, take him to go and wash. He said, find your way there. Same thing Elisha told Naaman. Go and bath. See? You can choose to be arrogant about it. Or you can humble yourself and enter that water seven times and change your story. Naaman said, but there no rivers. The, the, the servant said, I'm walking with you. Soon I will leave you. Please, you better be healed so that this thing will be better for us. You are a liability to me. This and that and that. Go and bath. And he went. Watch this. He went and started obeying. But nothing happened till his obedience was complete. Six times he would have gotten up and just gone with mud like a fool. A man who brought victory. Right? He would have just moved and say, Ah, Captain, where are you from? He said, What well, one stupid prophet gave me an instruction? After six times, I said, Come on, my pride will not allow me. Many of you started obeying. One step to see the hand of God, the devil brought you back. And look, nothing happened. One step. Some of you came for miracle service, for instance. And we said, In the name of Jesus, you shout that name, Jesus. And you just stood and said, I beg, there is. People were just shouting like fools and you were there and said, ah, everybody was getting blessed, getting healed. Instructions. Instructions. The secret of true faith. When you get that word, obey. The truth is we have not been obedient enough. And this is why we've not been seeing it. Look at the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus took the bread, blessed it and did what? The bread did not multiply in the hands of Jesus. Did it? No, sir. He gave them. He said, go and start sharing. Go and start sharing. Look at the ten lepers. He told them, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And they went at that word. The Bible said, as they went. Not before. As they went. He says, this sign shall follow. Not go before. You have to take steps. A miracle always comes or the miracle always comes after the instruction or condition is met. Never forget this. The miracle always comes after the instruction has been obeyed. Fully. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way. Oh, oh yes lord i will obey yes to your will lord yes to your way concluding faith is defined as the action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the instructions required by God right faith is the action you take not the desire to act the very action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the conditions or instructions required by God. 
if you do that, you have manifested what the Bible calls Bible faith. Otherwise, you will just be playing games and talking games. I told the Lord, whatever you demand of me, I will do. I was in Abuja and um, one of my very nice shoes that I love, I was polishing the thing to package it and the Lord told me this shoe goes for so 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 person. Someone sowed a very major seed into my life and as soon as I received it, God said, now you are an usher, pass it to so 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 person. Years ago I would have cried but I've grown. Because every time his instruction comes, that's my status changing. That's it changing. Hallelujah. Last year, when we were starting Koinonia, the Lord said we should carry all the seed in the house and sow everything. Everything. The whole money. I told the finance department, I said the Lord has given an instruction. Pack everything. Ah. If God has told you you will marry a man of God... It, Start praying for grace. Don't just say when. Pray for grace. Because you are, the man himself is, is enough to be a ministry for you. A true man of God is strange. Right? You wake up and see a man roaming like a zombie in your room. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Honey, what's going on? I'm okay, it's alright. And you are wondering whether you are the one who is going as a sacrifice or not. Listen. You will never receive breakthrough beyond the level of your last obedience. Never. 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 Don't reject the instructions of God. Every time you search the Bible, look for conditions, not just promises alone. What are the conditions tied to them? Hallelujah. I sowed that seed and in less than two hours, more than 1,000% of that seed came into my life. Hallelujah. Crazy instructions that God has given me. Crazy instructions. I remember when I traveled to Canaan land as the instruction of the Lord. I went with a seed and I went there when I was done outside in the public, not in one small corner. The Lord told me, go on your knees on that ground. And I went down there. I've shared the story. You know about it. I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to give everything. Everything. Hallelujah. I carried my Isaac. Dragged it into the church. And came and placed it on the altar like a fool. Don't want any man's glory until you can obey the instructions he obeyed. What you need to pray for is Lord grace there was a time the Lord instructed me I locked myself for three days non-stop my eyes did not see the sun did not see the sun because the Lord said so no sun no food no nothing the only thing that I did was to take my bath and that was because the bathroom was inside the room where I stayed no nothing are you willing to obey if ye be willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land hallelujah i told you about how i trekked from the roundabout in pz right at the instruction of the lord the roundabout in pz i trekked to aviation praying in tongues i take this city the keys of this city is given unto me don't you sit down and see people coming and think it's just because i'm a young man it's not charm when you obey him, his integrity is committed. Who is God speaking to tonight? Stop grumbling and complaining. Cry and say, Lord, what is the word for the next level? Because if he gives you that word, you will rise to the level. Hallelujah. I remember someone who one time, his father was sick. And he played an instrument for, from night. The Lord gave him an instruction to play an instrument. From about 10 till about 6 in the morning he said just play that instrument non-stop and that guy was worshipping by the morning the father was healed look at me the arm of the Lord is not too short Koinonia. are you hearing me there are pastors there are people we like miracles but we hate instructions we hate instructions 
my life moves at the pace of the instructions of the Lord instructions of the Lord I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday I saw one suit that I like new suit they just sold it to me and the Lord showed me the face of someone in protocol ah! I said oh God this is going I called him immediately I said where are you I said come quickly this is for you and he came and I gave you a surprise I said bye bye before any unbelief will enter and I'll collect my team back go I love you Jesus that was from the spirit I worship and adore you I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything oh it takes faith to move mountains brothers and sisters I love you Jesus there is no instruction I will not obey. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Listen. It says through faith they subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They shut the mouths of lions. He said, what more can I say? For time will fail me to speak to you about Gideon and Barak and Jephthah. Ordinary men who obey God to the latter. Sister, when you obey God, that man must come. It doesn't matter where he is. Forget about witches and wizards. Concentrate on your obedience. Concentrate. There are some of you, God told you, drag your family members and bring them here the word came with the grace for it to happen you say master we have toiled all night there are times God can use a man to speak to you they tell you go and listen to relationship and family life I have listened to it before no, no, remember you are responding to a word, don't forget he may tell you to do what you have always done, but this time around there is an anointing upon it you will do it and see very seemingly crazy instructions God can tell you just sit down on these drums and just be playing and clashing the cymbal and praying it, don't do it do it if you are ashamed of men, forget about greatness. You will never carry certain levels of the anointing. I went for six hours in Joss, standing at the Reinhard Bonke Crusade because I was desperate. And, and I set my gaze on that man because there was something I wanted to land on. I was not sitting down asking stupid questions that people ask when they go to places. Ah, this, man, this white man, why is he wasting our time? Is there Rema or no Rema? That was not I was at my 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 face was set like a flint. Brothers and sisters, listen. Wait, the financial prosperity series I'm about to preach. I truly believe it will cause a revolution. There are new things that the Lord has shown me that I put my hand on my head. I say, My goodness, Joshua Selman, where have you been? Your life must change. We're in the season of the rain. Obedience is the plan. Don't blame anybody. Take responsibility. There are only three prayer points tonight we are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Sorry about the time. We are really working on beating the time. But I want you to pray. Begin to thank God for the word tonight. Begin to thank him for the word tonight. It's time for new levels of grace. New fountains. New levels of impact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, help me and give me a receptive spirit to hear your instructions and to see your conditions as demanded by scripture. Lift your voice. Please pray seriously. This is the time to pray and not walk around inside and outside. Let our spirits be opened, O oh God. That as we study, may we see instructions. May we not just see promises, but conditions. Oh 
Your level is changing, I tell you. Your level is changing, I tell you. God is not a man that you should lie. He's not the son of man that you should repent. Lord, I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I'm receptive to your instruction. Hallelujah. Listen, there are conditions tied to you walking in divine hell. There are conditions tied to influence and increase and honor. There are conditions tied to prosperity. There are conditions tied to longevity. Find out. We have preached these things. Our messages are full of these keys. Prayer point number two. Lord Jesus, speak to me. Speak to me. I'm ready to obey. Speak to me. Let your word supply grace. Reveal the strategy. Pray. Show me the key to the next level of breakthrough. To the next level of influence, to the next level of encounter, to the next level of the anointing. <laughs> Through dreams, through vision, through the written word, through prophetic direction, instructions will come in messages as you walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number three. I want you to pray this with all your heart. Cry for a fresh supply of grace for prompt and complete obedience some of you god has given you instructions there are seeds to sow there are places to go there are tapes to listen to there are encounters there are retreats to have you have not obeyed so you will never see his glory lift your voice and cry i receive grace I receive grace. I receive grace. I Hallelujah. Watch this. It is after you obey that you can now begin to confess. 
and then you can now sow a seed and tie a seed to it except if the sowing of the seed is the instruction or that if I'm believing God say for a house and I find out God gives me an instruction go and get an architectural design and see the kind of house you want that's an instruction don't sit down and start giving foolish arguments now I go and I say Lord I found what I want God will say go and estimate how much will it cost now you, you estimate and you say it will cost 15 million <laughs> you are sitting down all you have home and abroad is 500 naira forget about it and it, look the blessing is in the instruction it's not in what you have whether, you, you, whether it is 1,000 or 1 billion, it is still faith that will bring it. Hallelujah. And now you begin to pray. And while you pray, God will say, relax. He said, don't worry. Just relax. It will come as a seed. You have heard the word. You stand still. And you begin to prophesy. Or God will say, now go and sow a seed for it. Or you want to get married, for instance. And, and, and you are praying and you are thanking God. You are saying, Lord, thank you for this. And then you find out God gives you an instruction in the place of prayer. Maybe go and wash the plate. Go to one woman who is already married. It may even be your friend. He said, just go on a Saturday and help them sweep and wash their plate. That's the instruction. If you are too ashamed to do it, forget about marriage. It may be crazy, but go and do it. After you have done that, then you can now begin to prophesy. And you can now connect with a seed. And say, Lord, I sow a seed into this. And I speak. My marriage is coming. The man that God is bringing, like our sister said, is a blessed man. He's a godly man. Your obedience is complete. Something is wrong with your family. Your husband or your wife is misbehaving. And all of that. You don't sit there and say, me and you will enter the same trouser. What has entering the same trouser got to do with, with the solution? You don't need to enter the same trouser. You need a word from God. All these stupid cultural things that we put, we must enter the same trouser. And do what? Is it going to solve the problem? Get a word from God. Where you are confused, come for counseling. This is the situation. What do you think? What is the, what is the scriptural mystery? What is the principle that is responsible for the delivery of this? Right? That's why we pray. That's why we come here all the time. We are dispensing mysteries. As these mysteries are dispensed, it's falling on different people. You catch it and you walk with it. It has changed the lives of people from nothing. It has taken people to wherever they will go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very fearful and touching testimony. A gentleman listened to my message. He's been following my teachings and he's been listening to my messages and they're trusting God. He's a real estate person. He's trusting God for breakthroughs and all of that. And then a miracle just happened to him. Within a short time, they gave him 60 hectares of land to develop and sell. His profit from that is 300 million. He's a young man like me. The word. As if that will finish. When I, when I got to Abuja, he made sure, every time I go to Abuja, he makes sure he's the one driving me around. He said, I must drive you. The last time I went, he said they gave him another 40 hectares, making 100 hectares. What is it that God cannot do? Your obedience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your obedience. Your obedience. Your obedience. I hear a lot of testimonies. Testimonies. You were, I think many of us have, have we've heard about the testimony. Of the woman who for eight years was barren, Selena's auntie or so. And this woman supernaturally, by acting the word of God, had triplets. They are all alive today. Triplets to recover for the eight years. What is it that God cannot do? Don't come with say right prayer request. It's when you are here that you just scrabble in what is even your own. You are just playing games with God. That's why very few people get testimonies. Change your attitude from today. Let it not be Friday by five. You say it's time for koinonia. Be intentional about it. There are people who come in for miracle service. We all fast on Thursdays. But on Friday, they, they prepare. When I'm coming for koinonia, it's as if, do you know, you see me sit down sometimes here. My body is shaking. I'm just waiting for worship to finish. Testimonies, when people are shouting, you see, there's answer. I want to just dispense what God has brought. But there are people who just sit down. You bring a teaspoon and you want, you want to have an ocean of blessings. 
enlarge your capacity. Don't sit down asking, can I get the child? No. What you should be asking is, can I get the twins or triplets? Not, can I get the child? Are we together? You are here tonight because you are trusting God to do something in your life. Face the business that brought you and be serious. Don't sit down laughing at others, criticizing others. Others will be taking radical steps of faith. Don't sit down there being cynical, laughing at them. No. Connect and open up your spirit. Man of God, open up for your ministry. There can be more. There can be more. There can be more. The pressure of ministry will kill you if you continue going the way you are going. There is a system that bails you out. Even favor, let me tell you, this favor that we think is very free, there are laws. There is an unction that brings favor. It is a manifestation of favor that is effortless. But there is a system, an exact system, a science to its coming into your life. Hallelujah. Don't sit here and allow the over 40,000 or so people following online who are receiving and getting blessed and their lives are changing and you are here seated and you are wondering, can God change me? Are you not seeing? Don't you see his signature all over? Listen, there are three platforms for us to receive in the kingdom. I'm rounding up now. There are three platforms for reception. I've taught this, but let me just touch it quickly. The first platform for reception is an encounter with the presence of God. When you meet God, the presence of God alone, listen, will leave certain deposits. It's like an intercourse between a man and his wife. There is a transfer. So when you meet God, there is a deposit. Listen, the second platform for reception is through your understanding and your application of the principles of the kingdom there are dimensions of the power of god that has been vested in laws you don't have to pray the moment the laws are accurately um, operated the power is released immediately you don't have to be a christian but the third dimension listen the third dimension of reception is by tapping into the covenant a man has with god listen Men enter covenants with God that represents platforms for certain possibilities to find expression. Either through their personal press or through the office they represent and the possibilities it brings. Listen to me. You will never touch prosperity ignoring Abraham. Abraham entered a covenant with God that became the platform to see that dimension of God work in your life. There are men today who have covenants with God answers to prayer is not just by their personal faith their altar is a mystery and others can tap into that mystery through honor and receive results that are above and beyond your current level of believing god when when saul came where samuel was just that atmosphere implicated him he prophesied all kinds of things happened to him You need to understand that territories, human beings represent systems in the kingdom. And not there are certain audacious statements that when God makes, he's not just waiting for your personal faith. He creates the platform for receiving those miracles upon a covenant. Are we together now? God entered a covenant with Abraham. Is that true? And then Abraham slept with Hagar and then had Ishmael. Is that true? They were at the wilderness crying. Two of them were crying. God only had the cry of Ishmael. Why? Because Ishmael was Abraham as far as the covenant was concerned. So God could not listen to Hagar, but he had the voice of the Lord crying. And because of that, he came. Let me tell you, this ministry you see like cobwebs is an encapsulation of mysteries and covenants mysteries and covenants agreements with god that become the platform for certain possibilities to happen i want you to leverage on those advantages and cheaply tap into certain things tonight you are not alone there is grace for you rise up on your feet 
You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we begin to minister I want you to lift your voice and tell God everything you desire for him to do don't keep quiet don't say God knows open your mouth Lord step into my finances Lord step into my business Lord step into my family faithful God hallelujah Se que para da bato sobra de balada. Lord, take away the barrier that is stopping my doors from opening. Take away the barrier, oh God, stopping my influence. Enlarge my coast, Papa Tayaba. Se que tele catara ba 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 ba. Answers prayers. Kata tola to setaya. Lord, I must take my testimony tonight. I'm tired of this fibroid. It dies this night. This night. It must go this night. Not tomorrow. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, favor must land upon my life. I'm tired of struggling. Favor must come upon my life. Sikepa go soto bakata. Those online, make sure you are praying. The anointing of the Spirit will reach you where you are. You reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign. Na 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 na
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is starting tonight with an impartation. Don't bring them out. I am seeing the Lord speaking to me. And he's saying there is an unction for divine strategies. And it's coming on 21 people. 21 people. I stretch my hands right now. I stretch my hands right now. Receive that impartation. 21 people. Divine strategies. The wisdom of God. Receive it. That idea, Kato Sotoya, divine idea. Someone has been praying, Lord, show me the way. Here it comes. The anointing brings it. Help them, please. The anointing brings it upon your life. 21 people. The Lord shows me. 21 people. An impartation. Supernatural strategies. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to begin to minister now. But the Lord, the Lord is speaking to me. Listen. Listen, the Lord is speaking to me and this is a mystery. God wants to use two people for a prophetic word. Two people, listen, two people for a prophetic word. Two people. Play mic. Something supernatural is happening. Ah. The Lord is taking me in the spirit. And I'm seeing a map. Get ready please. I'm seeing a map in the spirit of Nigeria. And I'm landing in Kaduna state. I see an anointing touching Kaduna people now. Right now, right now, right now, by the Spirit of God, Kaduna State, Kaduna State, I see an anointing, only Kaduna State, Shabarapakata, Embreketeta, Kaduna State, a miracle happening for Kaduna people, Southern Kaduna, Southern Kaduna, there is an anointing, there is an anointing, God is bringing breakthrough and deliverance, breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough and deliverance. Breakthrough. Hallelujah. I don't know why God does this. Brothers and sisters, don't ask me. Don't ask me. This is an operation. It's called the Ministry of Signs and Wonders. Now I see Benway State. Benway State. I see an anointing on Benway State. Now, an anointing on Benway State. Benway State. Shaka Toda Parata. Reketekete, help them please. Benway State. You can't stand it. You don't have to know whether you don't know your state. Benway State. Miracles. Miracles. Go into Benway State. I hear or to go in the spirit. A miracle happening right there. Right there. All those connected to that bloodline. There is a miracle for you right now. Don't trivialize what is happening here, brothers and sisters. These are territorial breakthroughs. Territorial breakthroughs. Hallelujah. 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 I'll pray for Stephanie. 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 I'm hearing a name, Stephanie. Please, let's save time. Who is Stephanie? 
you're like a red dress or something like that stephanie who is that stephanie there is a stephanie i'm seeing i will pray for you but i'm seeing someone and in the vision the lord is showing me it's like a red dress but i'll pray for you lift your hands the lord says i should tell you witchcraft ends in your family witchcraft ends in your family you will hear testimonies that will surprise you right now i stretch my hands towards you now it ends by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus johanna 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 i'm hearing a name johanna please save our time johanna i don't know who that person is johanna i won't continue speaking like this because we have to be fast johanna 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 whether you're here inside or outside johanna 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 there is a lady following us from lagos your name is blessing your name is blessing you are in a room you are following from a laptop the lord is saying i should tell you he's bringing an end to the captivity of your family in the name of the lord jesus christ he's bringing an end to the captivity of your family he's bringing an end to the captivity of your family hallelujah now lift your hands i want to pray i tell you i feel fire in this place it's time to command deliverance it's time to command deliverance upon the forces of darkness that have tied our lives forces of darkness the lord is bringing deliverance to your family your family the lord is bringing deliverance i'm seeing a plot of witchcraft over his family and the lord is bringing deliverance right now right now to the family right now to the family the lord is bringing a major deliverance to the family a major deliverance to the family hallelujah listen listen as i begin to pray for you all those devils that has tied the lives of people it doesn't mean you are possessed it's not an insult you may not even know you may be minding yourself just like you're standing now i'm going to command those devils they must go they are not only going to live your life they must live your family are we together listen some of you brought many prayer lists just one spirit living will produce all that testimony believe me believe me lift your hands my heart my soul i give to you i bow to you my savior and king lift your hands thank you jesus father thank you for your anointing to deliver to set free there are spirits in this place sitting on the lives and the destinies of people and in the name of the lord jesus christ they must go i want you to bring them out now they must go they must go now at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus you'll be surprised to see what happens kai 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 i see spirits of delay 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 spirits that have held men down all kinds of spirits father in the name of jesus at the count of three lord as your people shout may this shout reverberate in the realm of the spirit and may it bring breakthrough 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 flowing sound my flowing sound in the name of jesus one two three shout jesus now i command those demons go now go now go now Kato Sotoba. lift your voice and begin to command every spirit every devil help them please go now i command every spirit of witchcraft that has tied the lives and the destinies of people you must go now inside and outside i command you inside and outside bring them out i command you by the power of the holy ghost lift your voice i command you you must go now now by the anointing of the spirit release their destinies 
release their destinies release their breakthrough lift your hands we are still praying Atasile kaprosu do pariata katusha. Prende kabrato soko tu bale yakata. I'm seeing gates and I'm seeing chains on them, and the Lord is saying to unlock those chains, unlock those chains. That anointing will come on certain people right now. Father, I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus, wherever they are, any place in your life that has been chained and tied, right now in Jesus' name, I command those gates be open. Be open, be open, be open, be open by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Chains, chains, be broken. Ushers, please. Chains, be broken in the name of Jesus. Chains, be broken. Be broken. Kalapatoshaya. Release their destinies outside. The Holy Ghost is touching people outside. I see a wind of fire touching people by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Every enchantment, every enchantment, every witchcraft against the lives of people, against destinies, you must go now. Mr. Man, lift your hands. This man, lift your hands. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that your breakthrough begins this night. Right now, receive that anointing. Receive that anointing right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring them out. I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity, we have to be very fast because I want to focus on barren people right now. Charity, charity, charity. Charity. I'm hearing the name Charity. Charity. The Lord wants to bring breakthrough for Charity. The second overflow. There are two people God is touching there. The second overflow. I see the anointing coming on two people. The overflow. The roadside. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Something is going to happen here. Now, ushers, I want you to be sensitive. I'm going to pray for certain people. You will have to help them. The grace for speed, listen, is going to come on some people. Physically, they will find themselves trying to run, help them. So that it's not like they won't be able to control themselves. It's a prophetic act by the spirit so that they don't enjoy anybody. Lord, in the name of Jesus, guys, be sensitive, please. In the name, help them, please. It's already happening. That's the instruction God is giving me. An anointing will come on you physically. You will begin to demonstrate your breakthrough. Right now, Lord, I release that anointing. Give men speed. Give men speed. Give men speed. 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 By the power of the Holy Ghost. Give men speed. Run like Elijah. Help them. Run like Elijah. Help her. Help her. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. Grace for speed. I release it. I release it. From my spirit. I release it. Grace for speed. No more stagnation. No more retrogression. Run with the grace of Elijah. Overtake the chariots of Ahas. Hallelujah. Charity. Charity. Are you married? The Lord wants to give you two miracles. Huh? Number one, God wants to settle you maritally. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Second, what are you doing? I just finished school. I'm a graduate now. Huh? I'm a graduate now. You are a graduate? Yes, sir. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing Abuja. Huh? Yes, sir. Abuja? Yes. 
What is Abuja? I have a fiance. Abuja. You have somebody there. Yes. Sir. That's the person to marry you. Okay, Did you sir. tell me? No, sir. Did you tell me? No. That's what I'm telling you. I'm looking at you. I said God will settle you. Amen. Maritally. Amen. Huh? And then God will give you a job. Amen. Supernatural job. Amen. Because it's your desire. Amen. God will give you a job. Amen. The Lord is saying I should prophesy to you. I'm opening a new chapter over your life. The past. Uh -uh. Your future has to change. It, the, what the past is is not a good testimony. And the Lord is saying I'm giving you a new chapter. A new chapter. Come my dear in the name of Jesus. God is giving you a job. May he connect you maritally. Huh? Is your name Charity? Is your name Charity? In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Delay ends now. Delay ends now. I pray for your auntie. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I minister to one more case before... I pray, I want to pray specifically for barren people. I'm going to pray that before we do a lot of other things, before we call the sick out. Thank God there are many hands today. And so we're able to do a very quick walk. Ladies, when I count three, just shout I receive. Don't worry, follow me and do my stupid thing. Are you ready now? One, Two, three. There is an opening. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Many people are entering it. I see it. It's a door breakthrough. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. There is an opening in the realm of the spirit. Shalom. Shalom. Jehovah. Shalom. Shalom. You're mighty in this place. I tell you, if, if God would open your eyes to see the breakthroughs that I see being released to people in the realm of the spirit, doors, strange doors. I told you there is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. There is grace for increase. The language tonight is more, 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 more. There is more, more anointing, more grace, more unction, more wisdom. There is more. There is more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please drop your hands. The Lord is leading me to pray for brothers. Lift your hands. You'll be surprised to see what will happen to you now. The Lord wants to release grace for establishment. Listen, there is such an anointing. Don't be foolish. Receive it. Receive it with all your spirit. There is a spirit, especially in this side of the north. Men get established very late. Very late. Very late. You make money late. You build a house late. It's a bad spirit. God wants to release something. Those online, you can follow. I want to pray. I, I see this thing falling on many men. Jesus, it is your word. You have released this word. I put authority upon this prophecy. And I declare, let it enter like an arrow into the life of men. Right now, take it. Receive that grace right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. At the count of three. One, two, three. Take it now. Take it now. Help them. Grace, grace. Strange establishment. Doors opening. Doors opening. In their own accord. Help them. Doors opening. I put you in a platform spiritually. Where you experience speed and establishment. In the name of Jesus. Help them please so they don't enjoy themselves. My God. 
Be established. Be established. Be established. Be established. I lose your hands. I untie your hands. Every brother here, I untie your hands. Be established by the Spirit. Be established by the Spirit. Go and buy that land by the spirit go and build that house by the spirit i open strange doors don't say you are too young it's an anointing it's not your effort receive it in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now leave those who are standing here very quickly if you are here specifically please listen you are here specifically trusting God to stamp the feet of Satan in your family over the issue of children. You know God announced beginning of October that the theme for this miracle service, you've had the testimonies. Please don't say they have prayed for me before. Don't allow that unbelief destroy you. Are we together? While you are coming, there is a lady who will shout under the anointing. It is the grace that will release this grace for fruitfulness. It's a loud shout. It will be loud enough for everyone to hear. By the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise. That's the shout there. That's the shout by the Spirit. There is an anointing to pray for the barren. Come, please. All those, whether man, woman, if you are married. Look, don't come out here if you are not married. Why are they here? Why are they all here? You must be married except if you are standing in for someone don't stand here doubting there is an anointing i see a river some of you as you are standing right now the power of god will come on you just before i even start praying yeah. look at this will you open up the gate open up the door Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Lift your voice in one minute and sing it from your heart. Will you open up the gate? For you by myself that's the instruction i will do it very fast you don't have to tell me any stories i don't care what they said low spam count um infertility i don't care the report as you receive that touch if you are standing for someone call them let them know you are praying for them are we together now don't just say i receive and then you stand there let the people know what god is doing i'll have to do this very fast after that we'll pray for the sick generally we have a lot to do don't lose touch of this don't come for koinonia and then sit down this is not a museum let your heart be connected because there are different things happening in the realm of the spirit i'm going to be very fast i'm seeing listen i'm seeing something like a bird is jumping out of a lady now one person here i don't know who that person is but the lord is asking that until that happens like a bird that's what i'm seeing father in the name of jesus who is that person let there be that miracle right now it's like something will just leave you just leave you just leave you and release you and release you by the power of the holy spirit now as i pray for you many of you strange things will happen some of you are standing for other people but as i pray for you god is securing something in your life you don't have to come out please if you do not belong to this category that's the lady i'm talking about now i'll pray quickly just give us um uh, uh, keys just play something very quickly father in the name of jesus let everyone here return with a miracle child No matter what the spirit is, no matter what the issue is, fibroid, infertility, low sperm count, whatever, I don't care what the name is. 
it must live right now in the name of Jesus please shift very quickly as I lay my hands on you it is done receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace now go and carry your miracle child madam carry your miracle baby carry it now carry it now my God I tell you I see babies literally in the realm of the spirit carry it now carry it now Shabaratosia. carry it right now carry it right now miracle 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 there is an unusual grace here there is an unusual grace unusual grace unusual grace unusual grace as I lay my hands on you it is done it is done it is done it is done Heal now open up the gates in the name of Jesus Grace, 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 help them please, let's save time, grace, receive your miracle baby, my God, my God, testimonies, wombs opening, fertility be restored, receive it, take it, take it, Take it, take it, take it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Take it, take it, take it, take it in the name of Jesus. Quickly, please. In the name of Jesus. 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 Return with the miracle child. 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 No barrenness. Out. Out now. Release her now. Now. Out. Out of her. Return with your child. Miracles. 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 Miracles in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing twins in the realm of the spirit. The Lord is showing me twins. Somebody is carrying twins. Out. Let her go now. I command that spirit. Release her in the name of Jesus. Release her right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Let it be open in the name of Jesus. Grace, 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 grace. Sheba na do ba na ba na ba na ba na ba na ba. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Eko to shoba na na ba. The Lord is healing. Irregular menstruation, irregular menstruation for one woman is being healed right now so that you can carry your baby. Receive your child out, out of her. Now, return with your miracle child. Now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it ends now, 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let her go now. Keep praying in the spirit. Don't just watch. Miracles, miracles. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural miracles. The Lord is anointing you. Receive that anointing now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Grace, grace, grace. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you. Grace for you.
grace, 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 grace. Open, open now. Open now. I see a womb that is closed. Open now. Shaka para toka toka tele ba 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 ba. Embrete koto. For you, I want a woman to come up. Yes. I'm seeing a woman who is pregnant. You have been having nightmares. Somebody comes to you in the night. You have you even wake up shouting, you've not been able to sleep. There is a pregnant woman here with that situation. God wants to set you free. Please, where are you? If you care for you, can come and God will set you free right now. You are pregnant, but I'm seeing you having very bad dreams, like a nightmare. Madam, look at me. You are standing for yourself, for someone. Ah, hallelujah. Kai, I'm seeing something that is not nice. I need to pray for a lady here. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know if you have the courage. If you have the courage, I can pray for you. Please don't be embarrassed. This is a family. Something like a living thing. It almost looks like a physical living thing, like a worm or like a snake. Literally comes out of your private part. It comes out and goes back. This is like a, a living a real object please who is that i have to pray for you like i said if you have the courage there's nothing to be ashamed what who is this one why is she here coughing out no 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 don't bring her in jesus name you're okay come in jesus name it is done the lord sets you free by the power of the holy spirit i need to pray for that lady honestly this is a serious thing in fact it's not just one i'm seeing two of you come and stand here something it looks like a worm but it's bigger than it you see it it comes out and goes back on its own who is that you're the one god bless you for your courage can you celebrate her don't be afraid see look let me tell you this is this is like a spiritual hospital so this is not a place immediately i saw it even me i honestly i my body was doing me one kind but i thought you have to say it. this is bad it's like a doctor madam Kai. and you love god oh. don't be afraid huh do you know this thing where are you from because I'm looking at you, you are supposed to be a very great woman. I look at you and I see somebody. Ah, this is strange. I'm seeing, let me show you what I'm seeing. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing witchcraft from Delta State. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing a white woman. I'm seeing a white woman, but I'm seeing you. And the Lord is telling me that you speak like a white woman. That's the vision that I'm seeing. Say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I didn't know that. Look at me. My dad, look at me. Because I'm seeing this. You look far, far, far older than your age. Somebody even see you and say, Mommy, there's no mommy anything. You need prayers because you too, are you married? You are trusting God for a life partner. It's even why you came here. Look at this. The devil is a liar. See, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of the waster. That will want your life to keep going without achievement i'm praying for you now may that devil live your life forever in the name of jesus the spirit of a waster lives your life forever in the name of jesus i use her as a point of contact this is a nice woman she didn't bargain for this and she loves god are you seeing that now who knows probably you were trained by white men or she speaks very intelligently 
but everything grounded hold my hand man to a point that that do you know what it means another object did you plant an object in your body comes out through you at will goes back at will for those of you who think witchcraft is not real you are joking you are watching one right now not pile oh i'm not talking of pile hold my hands man i'm angry in my spirit in the name of the lord god that i serve i speak to you from the depth of my spirit right now i command that devil let her go now out out in the name of jesus i lay my hands on your stomach i command that wicked spirit whatever your name is don't only leave her pack your load with you and go out of this woman's life i restore you even physiologically in the name of jesus christ this old face is not your own you are not that old i change it in the name of jesus christ help her give jesus praise father thank you supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle supernatural miracle in the name of jesus christ hold my hands it's over over in the name of jesus over in the name of jesus it's over in the name of jesus there's one mama here the anointing of the spirit is going to come upon you for praying for barren people there's one mama here i'm seeing in a vision the power of god will land on you 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 may not even be expecting it not everybody this, this is an, like an elderly woman but i'm seeing an anointing right now wherever you are father something will land it's like fire it will land on one mama now supernatural grace you will start laying hands on the sick oh that's the woman there help her help her please bring her here supernatural anointing supernatural anointing for the for barrenness look at this look at this this is an elderly woman for god's sake Shera tabaroto koto baradia, lembra bata tatso kedia, ekara takatala totia. Father, take her to that level. I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic grace, and I bring you to that realm. Release miracles to women in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, please help her. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural. Supernatural. Daddy. Why is he here? Why is our daddy here? Who brought him out? You came on your own, sir. For barrenness. You. Where is your wife, sir? He's here, but I can't locate her. Now. Madam, come. You will see a man like hold my hand, sir. You will see a man like this and think he has a child. You have a child. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Yes. How old are you, sir? Don't be embarrassed. You are 57. You will still have your child. Where is your wife? Wife. Is she here? Is the wife here? She's not here. You are not sure. She's around here. You are sure she's around? Yes. Madam, if you are around, please, I want to pray for you and your husband. Otherwise, um, we can just pray and continue, please. So that we don't waste time. In the name of Jesus Christ, supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. You can imagine the kind of oppression. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Supernatural grace. Your wife is not here. She's not coming out. Or is she under the anointing? Huh? Whose name? Maybe she doesn't want to come out. I hope she's not. She's here. What's her name, sir? Esther. Esther Atuluku. Please, you have had your name, madam. That's your husband calling you. Can you rush, please, so that we save time? Is she here? Is she outside? Otherwise, I'll just pray for him, please, so that we'll save time. There's a lot to do. Daddy, how long have you been married, sir? 32 years. 32 years. 
if you ever tell me wickedness is not real if you ever tell me wickedness is not real our daddy's children would have been married now with their own children Ejimi, am i correct look at this abraham waited 25 years our daddy has waited 32 years sir you came here by faith you are our father here and you did not feel embarrassed to come out and stand here look at me sir i want you to look at my eyes so that you will know that i'm the one that has told you in the name of jesus i don't care whether your wife has passed menopause or not i don't care whether she can give birth or not i decree to you in the name of jesus christ hold my hand sir you will not have a child you will have children listen sir i'm not saying god told me to tell you i am telling you there is something called a prophet's reward in the name that is above all names i speak over your life that force of darkness that has vowed that you will not have continuity i cancel it right now sir you are struggling financially i have to pray for you god wants to open a door for you i, I hope you're not embarrassed sir, that i'm talking to you please hold my hands jesus please change our daddy's story let 32 years of barrenness come to an end now in the name of jesus christ i pray amen now please we're going to be very fast you are here for yourself you are not married you are standing for something. in the name of jesus christ supernatural miracle now we're going to be very fast you can see it's past nine but there are so many things we need to do we're going to do two things at the same time all those who are here trusting god for any miracle any miracle aside from barrenness except if you have another thing i don't care what it is please you are going to come there are men of god here who are going to lay hands on you very quickly it's a miracle service now look at this i want you to organize yourself uh those outside hold on please hold on overflow two just walk right to the front you don't have to come here overflow to the whole of those occupying the roadside just walk right to the front of your your stage there overflow one here just walk right to the front here all those who are here you can just come out come out organize yourself you are sick or you are standing in for people jesus listen if you are standing here for impartation go back please 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 don't make a fool of yourself we are going to pray for i know some of you just want me to touch you there's nothing wrong with you don't play games with god go back to your seat you will receive impartation some of you there's nothing wrong you just want in case if there's something i should still pray go back please we don't have that time are we together now i'm not joking please there is no time huh so those outside just obey instructions please some of you think i have to be the one to touch you that's unbelief i i spent time talking about faith here just walk outside stand there overflow look at how many people pastor for god's sake look at this look at how many people huh? almost everybody look at standing for somebody the devil wants to destroy people have you noticed that in the last one month there's been an outbreak of mysterious sicknesses someone will just get up in the morning and you cannot breathe again that devil is a liar in the name of jesus and i also understand there's been mysterious accidents you are minding your business car will jam you bike will jam you we are going to take care of all those things today it's called a miracle service now this is what will happen please and please anybody who lays hands on you just go back to your seat believing in faith we don't have time to take testimonies i know there are so many miracles if we do that we're going to spend time here there are other things we need to do are we together now so i will pray for you you can see there are so many people uh let's do it this way pastor pete is with me here so um pastor pete ah no edgy you know what edgy pastor femi you can go outside you can just handle that that one there pastor alpha pastor alpha kenny and um mike please you handle that one benga you will join here me him and pastor Ejimi, and you and who you and pastor femi yes 
we are not just I don't think just because you are a pastor don't look at me i'm walking by the spirit i don't have to call you we are not playing games this is not about ministry there is grace are we together pastor alpha please outside kenny mike promise where's promise join a jimmy promise femi and and pastor jimmy outside please just guide them protocol they, so that don't waylay anybody. Please behave yourself. Don't disturb anybody. I'm here with Pastor Pete Benga. We're going to pray. In the name that is above all names, shout amen. amen. Father, we're standing in unity from three different points. You have anointed this ministry to be a supernatural ministry and bring healing and miracles to your people. Lord, every man of God represented here as we lay hands on your people it doesn't matter what the situation is let there be healing let there be deliverance in the name of jesus christ as we minister to you any spirit that is at work in your life must be casted out in the name of jesus christ please guys we have to be very fast so that we'll save time pastor sir thank you so much worship help us please we'll be very fast now all those sitting and around those online just connect by faith there's nobody touching you physically but the Holy Ghost is there. He's representing us and he will touch you. While that is happening concurrently, please, your miracle, um, uh, your prayer request, pass it, ushers, if you can connect yourself. I know that there are not many of you protocol. You can help them, please. Pass your prayer request. If someone sent a text to you now, you can copy it quickly, please. Pass your prayer request. While laying hands on you, if they give you a prophetic word, receive it. Please, guys, don't waste time on one person. Let's just do it fast. Jesus will give you praise. I have no other God but you. Now, by the I have no other God but you. Right now. as they pray for you just quietly go back to your seat rejoice in go back to your seat check yourself Excellent is your 
pass your prayer requests I exempted Pastor Jakes for a reason the Lord gave me a word and then I'm going to give him and um, are we together now praise the Lord there is an anointing that is going to release upon you now before before we come to prayer I know there are people how far have we gone those outside there's still a number of people Okay, rise up on your feet, please, quickly. Jake. The Lord gave me an instruction to tell him to speak prophetically and release an anointing and a grace. Honestly, I don't know what anointing it is, but I want you to believe something heavy will come upon your life. Are you hearing me? Those outside, whether you are joining the line, they can still be praying for you while you receive this. It's going to be a very quick one and then... Um, Ushers, please let's have the request so that we can finish it because as I'm still going to speak in your life and there will be some activations. Bless you, sir. Just lift up your hands. Thank you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. You do my thing, you do my 
from the four winds of the earth. A mighty presence of the Spirit of God moves from the four winds of the earth. The wind of God's Spirit moves and the mighty hand of God. An angel, mighty, mighty angel, placing his hands upon the servants of God. There will be a quickening, quickening, an awakening. A flame is being set upon many now, upon many. Upon your tongue, I see fire. I see fire. The Lord puts a word in season for you. Aya. Oh, let bread you all see from Beliete, Salioste. Some of my worship people here, the Lord will place upon you an unction for worship. A strong unction. David, down the Lord is going to be placing upon you an anointing. An anointing is to come upon you. Pare su pretinda ilo si predia. Requito fiesta kila handa ha. Pora que te chupelenda pragadose. Requete la vaca cocosho que palagana. Renda pa freia so palenda ha. Resa profilesta calionde. Para soco palagada. I feel like the fire of God moving upon the ground. It will come upon the feet of many now. Upon the feet of many, the fire of God will come upon your feet. The fire of God will burn your feet. There's a fire a quickening. My God. Palio friesa kiata la ronte. Barus i cateli. Bo grakisti valande calebose. Tonight the Lord will open up portals for many as you sleep tonight. <laughs> Some of you have an experience of seeing a ladder as angels will ascend and descend bringing messages to you. Tonight, 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 tonight by the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. By the power of God's Holy Ghost. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you as standing here in the midst of Yeah, I sent the Lord's presence. <laughs> Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Jesus, and take, take your place. We'll hurry up while the other ministers are busy ministering to the people outside. We're going to pray on the request now. Pastor Pete is going to lead us. Pastor Sajex, please help me since you're the only one here. We're praying for your request. I want you to believe God. Stretch your hands over this place. And I want you to begin to pray in the spirit, everybody. Stretch your hands. You are praying in the spirit. We may not be able to minister directly to everyone. But I want you to believe that God will touch you. Don't just stand watching. Make sure you pray. Stretch your hands. Those online, I want you to know that your requests are with us. We are laying hands by faith also. Those online, you are part of this. Stretch your hands right now as we pray. Thank you, Jesus.
In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father in your divine wisdom. When you wanted to communicate to us the mysteries of your will. Lord you wrote it down for us to read. In the same vein oh God. Your sons and your daughters gathered across the nations. Those that are here. Those that are across the world from the internet. They have written their own requests, understanding the mystery of the scribes. That whatever is written has a spiritual significance. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we release the angels that respond to the prayers of men. The angels in Revelation chapter 8 that burn those prayers as incense and they ascend to the throne room of God. Right now, by the power of God, let those angels move swiftly in the name of Jesus. An angel appeared unto Daniel and said, I have come because of your word. Father, let angels respond according to this request. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Nothing here written will go back unanswered. We prophesy in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Father, we are on our knees on this mountain, at this altar, bringing this request before the throne room of God. And the Bible says, he that goeth before the throne boldly shall come back, O God, with results and answers. And the grace and the mercies of God shall be released. Right now, we release grace. And Lord, we release mercy in the name of Jesus. Every prayer written in this ground, upon this mountain, it is answered in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Aside from those that are still praying for peace, everybody rise up. Please rise up quickly. Rise up to receive a prophecy and the impartation. Two things we'll do at once, just two, three minutes, and then we're done. Please make sure you wait to the end of the service so that you listen to every announcement. I want to pray. We want to, every miracle service is a platform to activate grace. You have seen certain dimensions of God, but there's more. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you and I'll join it with the prophecy. This is the second to the last miracle service for the year. So don't be careless about it. Open up your spirit. There are people here who have been crying and say, Lord, I know there can be a new dimension of grace. I have seen your hand in my life, but I want to see a greater level. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Drink of a new fountain of grace. Help him, please. Drink of a new fountain of grace. I activate the gifts of the spirit at the count of four. One, two, three, four. Step into it. Eyes be open, ears open. Receive impartations. Receive impartations. Receive grace, grace. Impartation in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. The kind of favor that you have not seen from the start of this year till now. On this mountain tonight, I invoke it upon your spirit. May that favor come upon you. I call the heavens to bear witness that you are a carrier of favor 
in the name of Jesus Christ where it has worked for others and has refused to work for you I declare the grace that makes things work the power of performance receive it right now receive it right now in the name of Jesus everything dead in your life I don't care what and I don't care how long in the name of the one who raised from the dead I command that thing to come back to life I prophesy that nothing dies in your hands I prophesy that nothing dies in your hands tonight like Pastor Jake prayed revelations of strategies from the realm of the spirit receive it is coming on you receive it is coming on you receive it is coming on you supernatural impartation I pray for you everyone here who wants to start a business start a company start something any value adding platform I prophesy upon you the spirit of influence may it come upon it the spirit of influence may it come upon it the spirit of influence may it come upon it every student here hear me I program your spirit to rise to a new dimension in the name of Jesus on common understanding on common illumination any final year student here who it looks as if you are not going from the look of things in the name of Jesus we change it here right now believe God we change it now we change it now we change it from your faculty we change it from your department by the authority of the kingdom in the name of Jesus anyone here carrying any track record of bad luck it works for others until it gets to your turn then there must be stories I separate you and bad luck forever I separate you and tragedy forever hallelujah this spirit that came to Zaria that is causing men to be sick hear my voice there is a platform where ambassadors are in this kingdom therefore I stand apostolically and prophetically we fortify the spiritual borders of this city and we banish such operations in the name of Jesus may you and your kind be banished from this city in the name of Jesus that spirit that brings accident and untimely death looming around our territory no 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 Zaria is a place of light it's not the place where any spirit will come and loom and I speak prophetically Latera to Sotopata across this place every spirit of untimely death hear my voice in the name of Jesus I command the gates closed over you I command the gates closed over you not by accident not by bomb blast the gate closes over you everything that has left your hand that left your life that should not have left I don't care where it went to I call it back may it gather its kind and come to you I say it again everything that has left your life has left your hands may it gather its kind and return back to you listen anyone here who the devil has taunted spiritually financially in influence you are not rising for whatever reason in the name of Jesus I force you to rise in the name of Jesus I force you to grow if there is anybody in this place from January till now you have not stood here to testify I prophesy to you now and the next 30 days may it be your turn to stand here believe me 
believe me now and the next 30 days may you stand here to testify anyone here called jobless or you are doing a job that is not a job any nonsense thing around that is not bringing you tangible sizable benefit in the name of Jesus I don't know where the jobs are we create vacancies and put you there we create vacancies and put you there any man or woman who said over his dead body for you to succeed I declare their prayers answered tonight I declare their prayers answered tonight I pray for you listen there is a mantle of honor upon this house and if you belong to this family it should be evident in your life and in case it's not yet working like a programming in a computer like an antivirus I place that mantle of honor upon you may it shield you from shame may it may it shield you from shame hallelujah every spiritual life that has died here no more passion for the things of God no more passion for prayer no more passion for the word of God I plant in you a fresh passion tonight fresh passion tonight we're rounding up every family represented here that has not had a reason to smile this year it's been tears and tears from home every time they call you from home one episode of bad luck may this be the first good news you will hear good news of breakthrough good news of increase good news of speed in the name of jesus christ whoever rises up to find you may the God that I serve even in the secret may he fight them we're rounding up I pray for you barrenness or its kind looming around your life looming around your environment whether in your body whether in your finances whether in the works of your hands in your ministry in your business i pray for you the water that flows that makes the barren plant to receive strength and begin to rise and become a great tree i introduce that water into your life therefore i prophesy to you in the name of jesus be fruitful be fruitful multiply multiply replenish subdue and may you command absolute dominion absolute dominion help them please every strange nightmare strangers roaming around your sleep not allowing you to enjoy the sleep that the saints should enjoy disturbing you oppressing you sleeping with you manipulating your dreams confusing you you don't know whether it's god speaking or it's the devil in the name of jesus i banish those strangers from your life forever i banish those strangers from your life forever in the name of jesus christ and i pray finally for you there is a spirit of increase there is a spirit that causes men to prosper there is a mantle that brings wealth from the east the north the south you have the value but you need the access you have the value already you are not a non-entity you already have what to give but the other side of the exchange is what you are looking for from the east to the west to the north to the south whoever must show up in your life in the next 30 days 
to be a ladder for you to climb to the next level I prophesy and I call them into your destiny I prophesy and I call them into your destiny there's someone here God is giving you a word go and register a company and just keep it you may not know what to do with it but just keep it keep it and give God space to use it and surprise you that's a prophetic word for somebody here just register it and keep it you there is no business to source for don't worry register it and keep it and give God space to surprise you may that happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ every circle of continual suffering where you think you are about to rise up another episode of trouble I declare where the devil put a comma I change it to a full stop never again never again never again in the name of jesus christ you're here you need jesus you're saying man of god i have watched the things that the holy spirit has done i have seen the transformation keep standing please no sitting no moving around let's stand up please keep standing you are here and you are saying apostle i want you to pray for me i love jesus christ but for some reason my life has gone haywire. I cannot say that I'm truly enjoying relationship and fellowship with him. And there are others who are saying, man of God, this is the first time. I've always mocked at the things of God. I've never really been serious. But now, I'm making up my mind for Jesus. Overflow 1, overflow 2, all following us online. Wherever you are. I know that our time is gone, but let's honor Jesus. We cannot end this meeting without giving this opportunity wherever you are don't wait for anybody to come be the first i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here i want to lead you to jesus jesus is already talking to some people god bless you as you come god bless you as you come god bless you as you come there are people outside run like there's fire on the mountain don't stroll around run like there's fire on the mountain one i'll count one to five and that will be it. two lord i give you my life Three, please, we're out of time. Run, run to Jesus. I live for you. Every Come to him, he will give you a fresh start. A new beginning. Will you have your way? hallelujah if you are still coming please rush and join them it should not take a long time if you are still indecisive then just remain at your seat by now you should know where you stand when the titanic sank there were only two lists those who were saved those who were lost if you are not sure you are saved come out and join them because it means that you are not you are not safe you should be very sure if you are a man of god is like i think i'm safe come and join them and get a very uh, a, a high level of certainty to know that you are in Christ in the name of Jesus I appreciate everyone daddy thank you for coming and all those who have come to make this decision please understand you are not reciting a poem don't be emotional about it this is a simple decision but it's the greatest miracle you are opening up your heart to the life of God the Bible says and this life is in his son it says he that hath the son hath eternal life say this after me with all your heart and sincerely say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart tonight I come to you and I declare that you receive my life and manage it for me I receive your life into my spirit I declare that from today Jesus is my Lord my savior my friend and my king i declare that satan has no power over my life i'm a child of god i'm born again in the name of jesus christ father i stretch my hands towards these great precious people bless them let this decision be genuine and let this be the beginning of great days in their lives i anoint you with grace I command that you begin to see the faithfulness and the goodness of God in the land of the living. I plant in you like a virus, a hunger for the things of God. And I declare that it will override every other passion in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision that you have made. Now hold on please. I want you to do two things for me. Number one, the Bible says, they that be planted in the house of the Lord, it says they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Visiting the house of God is not the key to consistency. You must settle down and receive the word. Our prayer meetings, um, Tuesdays, except for this week, we're making a little adjustment. I'm going to bring an announcement on that shortly. But you can be part of it for at least one month so that you can build your spiritual life. And then I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll have your details and then they'll warmly follow you up on our behalf and the lord will bless you in jesus name please this way all of you god bless you god bless you in jesus name koinonia are you appreciating them hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain